The final race of season five is upon us. 500 kilometers, 125 laps, and the Brickyard plays host. You saw qualifying last week. We just finished up our last chance qualifier. The grid is set. It is full, and it's time for the Arrowhead 500 here exclusively on ABN. Welcome to the virtual Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We'll be taking you all throughout the field from top to bottom for the next coming hour. Hours. Qualifying concluded practice for the final time with nine minutes left on the clock. Drivers getting settled in for the most exciting night of the season. Everything is on the line here. The championship race and, of course, an opportunity to win at the most prestigious circuit in open wheel competition. Welcome back live on ABN. We're going to be hosting all the action on this Wednesday night. I'm David Kreutz, joined today by Olivia Hayward and Taylor Mills, getting ready to present all of tonight's racing and drivers, as we mentioned, getting their final laps in before getting inside the cockpit for the main event. Drivers have been pretty aggressive during this practice session. We've seen drivers going two, three wide, some in the fence, some in the wall, and then some. So, now we're going to find out what it takes to, of course, Consistent over the long term. Not going to be an easy race. All comes down to attrition and keeping yourself in it from the very beginning of the race to the very end. And right now, drivers getting their final practice laps in. How are we feeling about this field as we are getting set to go in just a few minutes' time? We have never had a field this big for a Champ Car event. Um, we've come pretty close. I think, I think uh, Vader's early season had 30, but we have 33 cars that will be lined up in 11 rows of three for 125 laps of this track. And I think now more than any other race, it's so important to be consistent and keep your nose clean so that you can make it into those final 100 kilometers to battle for uh, the race win and for two of these drivers are uh, potentially a title as well um, there are still no fast repairs available here that was confirmed uh, by Carmen Sienna uh, earlier today and so if these drivers want to have a shot at this thing they have to be sure not to push too hard too early because when these cars are clocking upwards of 220 mile an hour you need to be sure you don't overstand the limit even a small understeer oversteering to the wall could end your race very early yeah i think there's there's a lot to be said about this race here tonight i don't think there's uh too much you've really said it's important to keep in mind this is the champ car world series season five finale we've got two drivers going at it for the championship here tonight uh, austin far unfortunately missing we think due to some uh, real life uh, real life events which is hats off to him i uh, prioritize uh, real life stuff over sim racing this is all for fun at the end of the day a little bit of a prize purse for this one as well i don't know if i uh, quite have it remembered off the top of my head but it is 50 i believe it's 50 dollars uh, for the winner and uh, and counts down through the top 10 uh, but yeah, it's going to be a fight for the championship between Emily Howe and Lilac Zia. Lilac, a few points back on Emily, so needs really needs to win this race here tonight at the Brickyard uh, for Emily to have a little bit of a stinker. But the thing is, we've seen Emily have a few stinkers in the last few rounds that she's turned up, uh, and we know how much of uh, a chaotic race this sort of racetrack and this particular racetrack can throw up. Uh, it can come down to who's the most aggressive. Uh, that could throw up some different alternate strategies that need to be jumped onto. And both Emily Howe and Lilac Zero have been two drivers that have been really quick to adapt to fuel saving and strategy changes throughout the entirety of the season. So I think in terms of consistency, adaptability, we've got two very similar uh, champions, uh, potential champions uh, waiting in the wings to put on a show for us here tonight. The 
then they're just taking the entire field through uh, a verbal walkthrough of the, uh, the the three wide start because we are doing a proper a proper three wide start here tonight. Um, but also, I think it, it's important we do quickly mention the results of that last chance qualifying session, which I think Olivia has for us to hand. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so we had a couple changes between uh, last week's session and today. First of all, uh, P2 qualifier Marty Robo, unfortunately, uh, not taking the race start here, prioritizing a uh, personal uh things which again hats off that's always the most important thing um christina ryan also uh not taking to the race start our season two champion uh has passed the car off to blake henderson who will be starting from the rear of the field and also uh Eichler could not uh make it to this race and so Two rows of the grid, and we'll have all, all really all the work to do to try and move back forward um, to have a shot of this race. But we have played it having the longest race of the season 500 kilometers, 125 laps. We're looking at between four and five stops if this race does go green. Um, the drivers have a total of eight tire sets to, uh, to choose from, so they have a they have plenty of tires, really. Um, Choose a late torsion for strategy. Um, but that's plenty of time for pit cycles to strategy to play out. And if a driver is on those final few rows, that's probably their best option to move forward rather than trying to cut through 20, maybe 30 cars. We're just moments away from figuring out who's got what it takes in the big event. Practice still going on. Emily Howe, the quickest driver as it stands with a quick time of 40.313. So tentatively speaking, doing a good job at the 83 and of course necessary in the title fight. Emily right now going to be quickest on the board by a tenth of a second over Tommy Reynolds and Bryce Saucier then in third. Currently over 30 drivers are inside of this session, 29 of which have taken a time and we mentioned this is the biggest field we've seen this season and it is stacked with talent we're expecting to see some of the best in the field of course stay up there a few stories of drivers who we didn't expect though as the race progresses here we've seen some big circuits and the mile and a half racing is also incredibly quick so maybe those drivers who are very good with managing speeds are going to be ones to keep an eye out for especially after this first start, which I think is going to set the tone for the entirety of this race. We saw qualifying and how drivers were having trouble even coming out of pit road. As a matter of fact, six or seven runs ended up going to retries because of pit road errors. So you can imagine that when we're going at speeds over 220 miles an hour down these turns, which are approximately 9.2 degrees in banking, isn't all too much. Not a lot of support for these drivers. So if you mess up, you're going to feel it. Most likely, other drivers will too. So that first start is going to be a huge deal. Will they make it through that first time and get us in a good rhythm? Or are we going to see a little bit of trouble to start it? That's another question I'm sure is lingering. And for the drivers who don't have track position, they'll have to worry about that doubly so. Unfortunately, we are running a much safer setup at uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here this week. Last week's setup, of course, geared towards qualifying, designed to chew the tires up uh, and use as much of the rubber as possible on that four lap run, which is what was making it so tricky on that pit lane exit for some of our drivers. Uh, but we had the, the the big variance, the big controversial variance in weather conditions uh, at the qualifying session last week. Of course, it was quite a limited qualifying session. It was only three hours compared to what in real life is basically a whole day. So each of the drivers were l mostly limited to one run beside the, uh, the, the mulligans that got to go towards the end of the session. Um, and it did leave some of the drivers that didn't make it quite frustrated and they made, made those feelings known. Um, but that, that's something that a lot of the drivers are struggling with because some of the guys are going out on uh, track temperatures that would in the high 30s and then others in the high 40s, closer to and over 50 degrees Celsius, which is what 
uh, gives the track a little bit less grip. And coming out of the pit lane on basically stone cold tires, you're going to have no grip on the rears, no grip on the front. And it's just going to slide, snap over steer and everything. But the cars set up a little bit softer, a little bit more downforce on these cars this week and a little bit less power. Uh, so, yeah, should touch wood be comparatively easier for the drivers to handle. But of course, at the end of the day, it's the Arrowhead 500. It is Indianapolis Motor Speedway. No cars easy to drive around here. Um, speaking of weather, it is a glorious 26 degrees here in Speedway, Indiana. Uh, track temp, uh, that's 26 Celsius. Uh, track temp 47 Celsius and um, a little bit of a wind blowing at um, a crosswind at, at about 10 mile an hour. So, I think very good condition for racing. It should see cards spread out a little bit. Um, this should be easy flat in clean air, but it'll be very difficult to find clean air around here. And um, as the field uh, begins to set off for their first of three pace laps to form the three wide start for today's race, I think it's about time we start going through our grid. Starting grid is ready for us, and it's one packed with talent. At the front of the field with an upset on our pole runs, Seth Wansing has the pole position. Now, we're not doing the traditional inside and outside start you've seen all season. We're going to have a three-wide formation. Wansing going to be beside Tommy Reynolds in the traditional front row, but in addition, going to be third spot for the driver of the number 49, Alex Miller, final man on the new front row. Bobby Lauer is going to be running in fourth. Then from there, you're going to see fifth for Lily Pelletier Sharp, and sixth will be John Josh Tucker, the final driver in row two, with then and there seventh place, Tucker Sawyer, Hamilton Akabwesi in eighth, and then you see the 70 of Emma Kruger, last driver in row three. Bruce Silva concludes the top ten and is the starting driver in our new row four. Right, so see, uh, Ruby Esther's and Brennan Gregg would be row number five for our grid tonight. Uh, Wait, do we, do we miss 11 and 12? Oh, no. I think we might have just go back and forth. Keep... Go, go back forward. Go back forward. It's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Mo Perry and Freddy win uh, alongside Bruce Silver number four. Bryce Lewis and Ruby S. is and Greg on row number five. Uh, Emily Howe, one of our championship contenders, uh, alongside uh, Winston Alcalva, Brandon Cruz, and uh, Chauvin and Charmin Siena on row number six. Uh, with... Nicholas Pressy, Zach McBride, John Hayden, row number seven, and uh, Pacey Wygen, your inside of row number eight. Eli Sasek lines up alongside Pacey Wygen in the middle of row number eight, and Lily Fraser completes the eighth row on the grid. Kevin Young, Selena Thompson, and the other championship contender make up. I've lost track of the rows already. Is that row nine? Row, row nine starts with P25. Uh, Yes, sorry, Lilac's here on the outside of row 9. Uh, row 10, uh, last chance qualifiers, Parker Alexander, Hunter Peach, and Dale Markovsky. And then your final row of the grid, Kevin Feemster, uh, the number 80 of Blake Henderson being handed over to Blake Henderson from Christina Ryan before the start of this race. And Ryan Pennell is bringing up the tail of the field on the outside of row 10. And... Uh, is going to be the last driver to pull away at the start of this race here tonight. Can you tell we're not used to reading our three white grids? It's very uncomfortable, isn't it? I, it's just, it's just so third. And currently, everyone lined up single file uh, for, the, for the first and second pace lap, uh, with the leader leaving a nice ample margin to the pace car just to make sure um, that Fred doesn't interfere with the procedure. And then, as we cross the line again to start the third pacing lap we will form up three by three with a, i believe one second between the rows mm -hmm. as measured on the relative once the leader edits turn number four they go you go in the car ahead of you goes and we get going for 500 kilometers of racing now um before we get into uh the actual race this procedure in itself is going to play a little bit of a factor in um the first round of pit stops because this is an extra five miles that's being added on to the pacing distance 
And that's not nothing. These cars are very efficient in map 8 in their uh, fuel save uh, pace car map. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see Sturge have to cut their first in a lap shorter because of this extra running. Um, we expect the pit run to be between 22 and 27 laps, which again puts it right on the cusp between a two and a th uh, sorry between a four and a five stop. Um, but maybe 21 is the latest people don't full push and stretch it on this first stint because of this pacing procedure. As we come down to the bricks um, to start the final pace lap and you start to see the drivers fan out and get formed up side by side by side at Indianapolis. It's always so cool to see these things before the start of this particular race at this particular track. Look at this. It's, it's like nothing we've seen at any point so far this season. It's it's such a unique way to start a race. And of course, harks back to the uh, the original run-in of the the very long race at this track back on the bricks. Plenty of space to do it as well, but in cars very, very different to what were pulling around here in, uh, in 1909 when the circuit they, first opened. They used to start at five. Well, I, I cannot believe it. Um... And for the very first race, the pace car was the inside of row one. It wasn't ahead of the field. Just Amazing. That's how things have changed. But I mean, this does just look incredible, doesn't it? A full field of 33 champ cars ready to go racing for, for it, all the marbles. It feels like a um, like a squadron of fighter jets getting ready to take off on a sortie. <laughs> they go about as fast as well. <laughs> I'm ready for this one. Are we ready, gang? This is the big one. The I'm one for, as you say, now. all the marvels. Come on, gang. Put on a show for us. It's the most important race this season for good reason. Of course, historic circuit with all the prestige in the United States and beyond. And it's time for 33 drivers to figure out what it takes to survive at the Yard of Bricks. Green flag is due to fly this time through, getting us to the green for the first time tonight. Welcome to Indianapolis, the Arrowhead 500 is on its way. Tommy Reynolds then wasting no time getting around the pole sister as Seth Wanting already leading this race after one corner. Alex Miller choosing to sit back and sit in the slipstream with the two alongside him on the front row. But look at that gap Tommy Reynolds has already got. Seth Wanting is going to have a massive draft down that start finish straight, but he's leaving himself a little bit under threat from Alex Miller. Alex Miller going to be waiting back just a bit, and you can see the jump the top three drivers got, and they are so far out in front to three-second distance then to your second row. And it looks like everyone giving each other a lot of space. The field separate by 22 seconds as it stands. Going back to Ryan Pennell all the way back in 33rd. So we got a lot of distance between just about everyone here from top to bottom. And you look here, middle of the pack, drivers are fighting side by side. There's Bruce Silva with Mo Perry. Perry makes the move inside of the top 10. 10 then and there, but everyone is still going to be with their respective rows. No real intermingling just yet up at the front of the field. It looks like Tommy Reynolds and Seth Wansing have gotten away, and Tommy quick to jump on it to get that race lead, and he is up in front. He's got it there at the line. Seth's going to dive under, and already seeing that back-and-forth cat-and-mouse tactic. Nobody wanted to go full push at the front of the field for fear, of course, of stretching way too thin in regards to strategy. Lots of dirty air being thrown back by these cars. That that window of about seven tenths of a second back, if you can push through that, that's when you start to be able to catch the cars in front. But it is about those seven tenths of a second back where the dirty air starts to feel at its worst. Alex Miller at the moment in third place, just within that window. But you can see here, uh, car 18 of Lily Pelletier Sharp, very much in the middle of a bit of a fight here, uh, having to deal with all that dirty air. We're getting a really, really big draft from the car in front of it down the straight. He's pulling up, pulling outside to go to the, sorry, pulling out of the draft to go to the inside of turn one and does move up a position for now, but that's going to be straight into a load of clean air and it's going to leave a well under attack from the car behind again. And then that, that starting procedure really spreading the field out. You can especially see it in these front three groups. Further back, the rows have sort of merged together and we're starting to see some 
really tight racing. Uh, we've seen uh, Lila Zir drop back to three spots and it's tried it out of the way. Blake Henderson already trying to make moves in that 80 car up four positions. Uh, but up at the front, it is still these three groups of three with um, uh, Tommy Reynolds moving up past uh, Seth Wanzing to take the leadless race in the early running. Yeah, a little bit of a, it seems like a miscommunication between the rows themselves at the start of the race is what's caused the gaps to stretch out so far. But what that's, what that's doing is it's giving everyone the opportunity to start practicing those drafting tactics. We've seen Emma Kruger and Hamilton Akabuzi going back and forth a little bit in the last couple of laps, but took a so, uh, so yeah, looking to get a little bit involved in that one for now. Hamilton Akabuzi hanging it around the outside, just right on the edge of that rubbing in line, very slippy outside of that as it's not a very well rubbered in surface but you can see how much darker that tarmac is but here comes hamilton again back into p7 drafting past emma kruger to try and build as much lap time as possible with bobby bowers currently with the fastest lap time of a 40.6 we've already had our first minor incident off the race dale mark he caught the wall on the edge of one um and could be carrying a little bit of damage already in the early running um so then maybe one of our less experienced drivers making it through in that last chance qualifying session as actually uh, Blake Henderson just did the same. I believe Pacey Wygent further back in the field also catching that turn one wall. So it's catching a lot of people out in, these, in this early run-in. Again, the, the strength of that aero push is sometimes deceptively powerful. And if you're not expecting, if you're, if you're not predicting the, that, uh, tightness from the car ahead it can very easily feed you into those outside balls another little wall i think that was bobby blowers in the um in the th four car no that was um further behind maybe bruce Silver push tire ah. and it looks like mo perry's gonna be involved perry gonna slide down to the inside near a road course entry and the caution is out seven laps in mo perry gonna be the first to cause and we're gonna take it back right now and figure out what just happened as it looks like our number 28 goes for a wild ride just again that turn one wall just catching the drivers out from what I, from what I heard on uh, communications. Maybe a little bit of a uh, a mistake on the uh, the adjustments between um, the straightaways and the corners. Because you have drivers who are making adjustments four times a lap here um, to get the car turned through those corners. And um, those are the margins. If you miss that change once. And this could be Mo Perry's uh, race over early in the running here. It looks to a certain extent, though, like Mo Perry's gotten away with that a little bit. The car still looks relatively straight and maybe some minor repairs to try and get that car back in the running properly. It is being shown the mechanical meatball flag. Uh -huh. um, so we'll have to be it down pit road, but we'll have to be seeing whether the car is repairable with a little bit of elbow grease from the mechanics or uh, whether that car gets retired. Uh, but hopefully we can keep a full 33 car field for a little bit longer and this will bunch everyone up and um unlike the confusion we had on that initial start this will be three wide so this will be single file i should say hmm. and um everyone here has done that plenty of times even the stock car drivers if they've um if their field's been misbehaving will have uh tried to single file restarts in the past oh now this is interesting isn't it we've already got split strategies and we're only eight laps into this race one of the first cars down onto pit lane, that was uh, Lily Pelletier-Sharp and I think Hamilton Akabuzi behind her following her in and Emma Kruger as well. Yeah, basically everyone outside sort of that top five almost decided to come down pit road. Of course, some uh, drivers are choosing to stay out from further back to sort of cycle through and gain some trap position. Blake Henderson, uh, Eli Sassett, Carmen Sienna, John Hagen all taking massive jumps up in the field. And interestingly, I'm noticing a lot of the drivers here just taking fuel. They don't want to use one of those tire sets yet. Again, they only have seven replacements in the pits, which sounds like a lot. But for a race like this, and considering that the fuel tanks are still restricted to 75% or about 14 gallons, um, you can use up those sets really quickly. Uh, most drivers can be just for a top off on fuel, just looking for that little bit extra margin in case the race does crack onto a bit of a green flag run now of course 
you can make pit cycle here and remain on the lead lap, which will cycle you to the front if a caution happens. Um, but only if you're close enough to that lead pack to make that happen. And um, I'm also sure some drivers are looking towards trying to maybe cut out a stop. We did say it could be a four stop with some fuel saving. I believe that pit stop basically limits the need for fuel saving for that four stop now from here. So just a short little championship update for the moment. Lilac Zier and Emily Howe both came down pit lane this time by. So are sticking on the same fuel strategy for now. But as we've already mentioned, if we're looking at anyone to jump onto some alternate strategy, it's going to be at least one of these two folks for now. Uh, but of course, one championship we haven't mentioned anything about so far uh, is the team's championship. There is a team's championship being ran this season. And currently at the top of those standings, uh, I believe is going to be the Gearcats cars. Uh, just trying to get a... Yeah, so apart from the, the privateer free agent team that doesn't really exist, um, there is a 44 point gap between Arrowhead Racing and Gearcats, both of which have um, a driver fighting for the driver's championship. Um, it could have been a much bigger lead for Gearcats earlier in the season. A couple of times, uh, any team owners have failed to come into play that could have helped push them, uh, push both the team's championship contender and the driver's uh, championship contender a bit further up and away from the drivers behind. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a straight fight, not only for the driver's championship, but for the teams here tonight. So just to confirm, 10 drivers stayed out there. Mo Perry is back out one lap down, so does still have a chance in this. But you come out of turn number four, that one thing. They've, they've, they've crashed on the formation lap. Are you kidding me? I am deadly serious. Emma Kruger, Bobby Blowers looking like they're both involved in this one. There is smoke. Can you believe it? Yeah. Oh, upside um, down? Yeah, Emma Kruger's upside down. Emma Kruger upside down during pacing. Yeah, a lot of these guys trying to take advantage of uh, the, the the single file restart. Lily Pelletier Sharp was trying to get as well. Blake Henderson trying to get as close up behind. No, sorry, hang on. I think this starts at Eli Sasek. Carmen Sienna leaving a decent gap to John Hagen in front. Eli Sasek closes up and then checks up. Uh, then Blake Henderson proceeds to check up even further. Then Pelletier Sharp fails to check up, hits the back of Henderson. Bobby Blowers hits the back of Pelletier Sharp, and then Emma Kruger ends up in the back of Bobby Blowers and upside down. Uh, Hamilton Akabuzi looks to be involved as well, but that team's championship we were talking about earlier is now been turned completely on its head because two of the Gearcats cars are out of this race. That only leaves... Uh, the, Lilac. That leaves Lilac. The, the 89 is all on her own for the teams and the drivers. That is devastating for Gearcats I... championship charge. I don't know what to say. Like, it was I... just... I, 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 was it even in turn four or to turn three? I'm four, I think it was They were four. just trying to get onto that high line and he can't pass on the outside until the start-finish line. And I think the field got caught out by the fact that the speed is slightly higher on the outside line. Mm -hmm. Caught up to the field, checked up, and caused a four or five car instant. And he would close to it again. We have extended the, uh, no, no, the the pace cars come in. Sorry, we're about to yeah, go the, green here. We're going green now. And Seth Wanzing sees the green flag ahead, and um, we've Thank seen you. another big check up ahead. But they get through it, and Tommy Reynolds. Ah, never Pushed mind. Out again. Trouble in the back of the field, and it looks like we're just seeing incident after incident after that quick moment off of, of course, our pace lap. Yellow flag is out, and trying to figure out what just caused it here. Looking uh, way back. Blake Henderson, it looks like. Blake Henderson going to catch a piece. And, yup, destroyed in the front end. Yeah, that's uh, one of the drivers who was involved in the incident on the formation lap. So, he's going to try and get a, a look at this and see what happened. Oh, he just spun on entry to the corner. Yep, just uh, perhaps not setting the car quite up quite right for the uh for turn one on cold tires back end just comes around and him as the 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 banking builds on the outside of the corner just spin 
Single car incident straight into the wall. And a pretty hard contact on that left front. That could be another car falling out of this race. Um, Is that but a, I believe a... Mo Perry with a missing front nose code could get the footy dog here. <laughs> I, actually, yeah, saying that, I believe Mo Perry is the only car on that down right now. But yeah, just look at that. Just the, the, the rule of thumb for a restart here in here at Indianapolis in a champ car is you crank that weight jacker as negative as you need it. And I don't think uh, Blake Henderson quite did that this time. And uh, it looks like it may take that number 80 car out of the running. Of course, the car that was handed over to Blake Henderson by Christina Ryan for the Arrowhead 500. And we're just having a bit of a rough start to this race. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, as as we've seen uh, in some other season, uh, other races this season, it usually takes us a couple of goes to get into the rhythm of a single flag restart. Uh, sorry, a single file restart. Um, but one thing to really mention off that uh, off off that restart is uh, Tommy Reynolds managed to get a really nice jump on Seth Wanzing, and then put Seth out of position. Uh, hang on, no, let me double check, because I believe that's Alex Miller up in second place now. Yeah, it's Miller's in second, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, so Tommy Reynolds getting a really good jump on Seth Wansing to take the lead over the uh, start-finish line, and then putting Alex Miller up in position as well, so that's going to be, your top three is going to be completely reversed from the start of this race. And breathe. A few cars coming down pit road for a, another quick top up. Uh, most of the cars at the very back of the field. Uh, this time, Emily Howell likes it used to stay out. A bit of the fuel they've used under that caution is not significant. Uh, but we're now uh, putting up like 14, and the top 10 car, sorry, the top nine cars still have not made a pit stop. Plus the three laps of pacing, and I know we spent a lot of it at pace car speed, but they've not. They can't be too far off um, needing to come in for fuel at some point soon. But I think they want one more sort of green flag run to uh, sort of solidify their position before they want to make that hard left turn. And um, one thing we haven't talked about is just how fast that entry to pit lane is. They have to move the, the actual pit entry speed limit line further down pit road bits of just how much speed these machines are able to carry through turn four. The stock cars have it right where the attenuator is. Mm -hmm. These cars, it's, it's well further back, a good sort of couple hundred feet almost. Uh, with, with the danger of uh, daring to have an opinion uh, on this one, I don't like that when you pull off, of, uh, pull off the racetrack on the exit of turn four to get into the pit lane. I think I much prefer the idea of using the slow down lane that's on the inside of turn three and four to come into pit lane here. Hey, it's, it's a lot I, safer I, and it makes it a lot riskier to pit. Yeah, I, I spent I spent the fact that it makes it riskier actually makes it less safe uh, in, mm. in a way because you're gonna have drivers who aren't used to pushing on the, on the flat like that, trying to maximize pace on entry and sort of spilling back out into the racing surface. Um, I know Homestead has it um, in I race at the very least as a requirement, um, but here not needed. You can just come in off turn four, um, which is different to the exit where you do have to stay low until the exit of turn two. But you don't up to speed for that one. We're hoping to get a green flag run a little bit longer than a corner or two this time around. And 15 laps in, pit cycle, radically different ideas for a few of these drivers. But your top nine have not gone down to pit road. Rest of the field has gone in at least once. Pace cars in. It's time to do it all over again. Tommy Reynolds got a good jump to get the lead. Will anyone try to fight him back? The answer immediately will be no. Reynolds with a nice jump and we are through for a second restart. Not quite. The field again stacking up pretty heavily in the back, but just about getting it sorted out. And once again, it is Tommy Reynolds of Holland. This time, uh, Seth Wondy falls another spot to Josh Tucker. So, um, a little bit disadvantaged by these early race restarts, but again, long way to go and maybe just doesn't 
wanted to be in that sort of aggressive position on a restart, wanted to settle back in and maybe a little bit of fuel saving, but now to the fifth as um, Trotter Sawyer follows Josh Trucker through. Yeah, they've been very aggressive off that restart, making up a couple of places to get into the top three. Seth Wansing not having a fantastic race so far, already losing those four places from their pole position. But Tucker's got a massive run looking to the outside of Alex Miller into turn one, but nowhere to go with Tommy Reynolds out on the outside. But Reynolds and Miller still going side by side at over 200 miles an hour through turn two at Indianapolis. Alex Miller leaving plenty of space on the outside to Tommy Reynolds, closing him not by too much. Still plenty of race to go, so loads of respect being shown by both of these drivers. That gap naturally coming down a little bit closer through turn three. Lots of momentum on the outside right now. Tommy Reynolds pulling ahead a little bit as the cars almost get uh, close to making contact there. But here comes that slipstream. Alex Miller with the slightly tight line. They're three wide over the bricks. And Josh took it to the lead with a massive draft out of turn four. All the way down the start finish straight. Pulls between Tommy Reynolds and Alex Miller and takes first place into the first corner. And the caution's out again. Uh, perhaps a contender for the early move of the race from Josh Tucker, only for Zach McBride to come undone. And the 47 looks to be out of this one, immediately di di uh, diving and ducking down a pit road all at once. Caution's going to fly. Here's a look at what happened. McBride made a similar incident to what we saw from Blake Henderson coming into one and maybe catching himself out as you see here. Up the track, hits the wall, more like Mo Perry. And you actually see the car ahead, the Sitsu Yaslina Thompson also slapping the wall, I believe getting uh, some pretty severe damage from it. And sort of just guided the 47 of Zach McBride, who uh, had even more dirt yet to deal with him further back in that train. And um, yeah, leading to big issues for both of them. Zach McBride almost certainly out of the race, and the Slayer Thompson may be uh, out of this one as well. Yeah, that, that was something I wanted to bring up. Um a little bit earlier in the race as well when we were talking about it. Uh, the, the, the Just the pure straight line speed of these cars is a gift and a curse because they are generating so much downforce with these tiny wings just because of the the speed they're, uh, they're traveling at. But the problem is as soon as you get into the dirty air and that air comes off of the wings and you lose that downforce, you're then driving a 230 mile an hour missile straight at a concrete wall. And it's, it's so hard to keep it out of it. I, I think it's safe to say we've all had our own little incidents with that outside barrier at Turn 1 in the past. Driving through the now, we got leader Josh Tucker and a little bit of an update maybe on pit road. Yeah, all of the leaders, the, the cars who were low on fuel coming in with the exception of Carmen Sienna, it looks like. Carmen Sienna will stay out and take the lead of the race, but is already clocking onto lap 20 of that tank. The rest of the top nine deciding that now is not the time. And again, some cars further back as well choose to pull that pit road. Cars who have stopped under previous cautions. Uh, maybe now is the time they choose to take a new set of tyres as well. It's like Lila Zier has taken her first spare set. Emily Howe chooses to stay out that time. So the first time we see a bit of a strategy difference between our championship contenders, but we can see her now taking the lead with Hamilton Atabrace and Frankie Wynn behind. I think it's the beauty of this race is the fact that uh, cautions coming out can really shake up the order because we've got first time, uh, is it first time race? Oh, actually, is that the field, the entire field coming into pit? Uh, I believe this is a replay. <laughs> This is oh, a replay yeah, sorry, of Carmen replay. making that very late move to stay out and take the race lead. Yeah, but it does that. It, it very nicely shakes up the field and, and keeps it a little bit interesting and gives everyone the chance to to get up to and run at the front. But I think the most interesting thing to come of that is the uh, the splitting of the strategy between our two championship contenders of uh, Lilac Zier and Emily Howe. Emily Howe, who's cycled up to the front now, uh, and Lilac Zier opting to shuffle backwards a little bit, but. It's been a, a messy start to this race, I think it's fair to say. But I think that's where a conversation we've had a few times throughout the entire season of that driver mindset uh, comes back into play a little bit. Everyone in this field knows that this is ABN's B 
biggest race of the year and everyone wants to perform well. So there's that little bit of added pressure that perhaps uh, these drivers are putting on themselves. And the challenge is how you deal with all that self-pressure. Because we've seen these guys uh, be able to deal with uh, the external pressures of being in a fight at, at other ovals. But because we're driving these cars at this track, that, that self-pressure is kind of ramped up uh, I'd say a lot more than throughout the rest of the season. And we're really starting to see some of the cracks starting to show in some of our drivers tonight. Uh, here's a quick update on the 63 machine. The crew doing a great job getting that damage fixed. It was being shown a, a mechanical meatball flag, but they've gotten Sir Thompson's car back out and on the lead lap. Uh, it, it, it remains to be seen just how, uh, how well that car is running. Um, but the 63 is during the field uh, as we come to the entrance of turn number three here uh, as we go back to live pitches. Um, so about to come back to Green Flag Racing for I believe the fourth time tonight. Um, Let's hope it stays green for a little while longer this time. Yeah, if we can get to live pitches. There, there we is. go. Welcome back to the present. And, and for some reason, we're, we're sort of running low through turn four here. Maybe oh. just try and get rid of those checkups as Carmen Sienna leads the field back to the bricks to start a lap 22 of 125, and we are back green in Indianapolis. Now, it might be early to say, but with Hamilton being up here in second, getting that track position, we might see a load more of the seven as this race progresses. 13 lap stint for Acapuese, 22 for Carmen Sienna, so we'll see if it's even feasible to hold on. Is Tucker no. Sawyer with a little bit of trouble? Yes. Is the caution going to fly? Yes, as well. Sawyer and Wanzig coming into trouble there through the short shoot. And we're back into yellow again. <laughs> So just a, a loose moment there. Maybe two address on the tools again for Tucker Sawyer. Um, I think getting away without any damage here, fortunately. Um, but as we go to Seth Wands in, in reaction, a much more severe incident and losing yeah. the front right tyre. So that's probably day done for our polter. Some, some interesting questions being asked uh, in in the voice chat uh, as to which which direction does what. On the on the jacket, where the positive is, is more oversteering, more or more understeering. Definitely feel like that's one of those things you needed to figure out a, at least a few races ago. Yeah, I feel like if you're, I, I do get it for some people. It is a bit of a set and forget tool. Um, but in your preparation for Indianapolis, you probably should have mm -hmm. ha have picked that up as something that this track really requires because of how brutal that that dirt yeah can be here. As uh, Carmen Sienna, our race leader, looks like will come down pit road here, led her laps, um, but will now add some fuel to the car. And actually, the car's behind her to follow as Emily Howe lines up behind the pace car and takes the lead of the race for the first time in this event. And that, I believe, will be at least one bonus point. So, even if it doesn't last particularly long, even if she has to pit under the next caution, this is a crucial moment in our championship. Violet Zit also choosing to not pit unless it will cycle out into P14 here. With uh, not too many cars choosing to, to make pit stops here. Yeah, of course, Violet Zit choosing to pit under the last caution that was only a few laps ago. And uh, Emily Howe choosing to stay out. So, of course, that's going it, to... It, it's the sensible choice for her to stay out yet again. Because it looks like you don't want to be down the far end of the field here tonight. Because that's where a lot of the mistakes and the restarts uh, still. There's a checkup happening happen. right now. <laughs> yeah, we've got a little bit of a checkup happening as the uh, as the lucky dogs come on by around the outside. But again, as Carmen Sienna almost goes into the back of Eli Sasek here. Um, 
but yeah, just everyone needs to settle into a rhythm now. Take a breath, take a beat, have a little bit of patience, and just crack on and do the job they know they're capable of. There's lots of racetrack to use around here, around here, even if you are doing over 230 miles an hour. But, but just, just, just get there, use it, and just be chill. It's it's not that deep. It's just pixel cars. I think we still have 27 cars uh, running on the lead lap here, uh, and a couple of more who are multiple laps down but still in the race. And um, Blake Henderson did just take his first free pass of the race. Uh, just four more of those to back on the lead lap, and I wish that was something to dismiss as a, as a non-factor, but with how these restart checkups have been and, and how they've been filing through in turns one and two, with another 100 laps to go, Blake Henderson could be back in the conversation here. It's not something that Bear's thinking about at this point. <laughs> Listen, we had to stay for, for overtime last week. I, uh, I'm not hoping for the same, but uh, I am acutely aware of the possibility. <laughs> Anyone happen to have a, uh, a live tracker of green to yellow flag laps at the moment? Because we've got almost 100 laps to go. And if it continues at this ratio, I think we're going to spend at least 50% of the race under caution. I would sure hope that pace is unsustainable. We've had definitely more than 10 yellow flag laps. I'm not sure if we have the overall numbers just yet. We're splitting it close to 50-50. Maybe that's going to change here with Emily Howe in control. But giving a few other drivers a chance to take the race lead. And now Emily, amid the points battle, getting the opportunity to go for it here for lap number 26. Green flag and a fly again. Everyone's single file. And Carmen Sandy will lead a second grouping further. Oh, there's a checkup again. Eli Sasek among others. And they're going to get spread out big. I, I just... I don't, don't get understand it. how we're not how we're not worked out at this point. We, it we took I think one incident at New, I think New Hampshire. Yeah, to Hampshire. get this filed away, but the large field is not not working out for us. It seems like. Yeah, the single file restarts are extraordinarily simple. Leader goes on green. Everyone else goes when the car behind uh, the car in front of you goes. Don't jump the start. Don't try and game the system because it isn't going to go well. And now we've got I think a couple of the cars running around with some more damage. But Bryce Saucier is your new leader of the race after getting a fantastic jump and managing to get a nice run on Emily Howe. But we know Emily likes to save a little bit of fuel, so perhaps this could be a little bit of strategy. Yeah, just drafted past on the exit of turn two and, and took the lead. We'll see if Emily tries to respond in turn or whether she's going to maybe sell into a bit of a, a strategy position right here. Use substitute to save a little bit of fuel because... That set of torsions did take us one fifth of the way through the race, basically one stop in. We know Emily Howe is going to be short on field, she didn't come down onto that last caution. And so, Matt to do some extending to, to offset from cars like Lilac Zir, who have pit 11 laps later. I uh, didn't have a fair bit more fuel in the tank. Drivers fanning out a little bit down the start finish straight to try and defend positions. That's going to be Kevin Young on Brandon Cruz around the outside to try and take that third place spot and he's gonna get it done. Kevin Young up into P3 and closing the gap to Emily Howe. That's that's a really, really difficult move to make on the outside of turn one. You're carrying so much speed into the first corner onto a part of the track that isn't very grippy. Uh, so yeah, credit to Kevin for getting that one done. Top three within a second of each other, gonna be much further spread out from here. We're looking at about 15 drivers in a frame. Now Bruce Silva gonna be running with John Hagen, Alex Miller, and while these drivers are much closer up in front, there's still a few tight battles happening from beyond the top 20. Parker Alexander right now gonna be with Kevin Feemster. There's Parker looking down and under. Just can't quite get it going there, and Parker remains in 23rd. Gaps are within 
few hundreds of a second, maybe even thousands when it comes down to these drivers who are looking for position. Frankie Wynn on the high side of Tucker Sawyer is going to get a spot, and Ryan Pinnell is the next target. Those restarts have been the big trouble, and I think if we just get away from this one with a good run, we'll be good for the rest of this race. Those stack-ups have been very very tricky to of course deal with and like we saw in new hampshire or other tracks where we see stack ups repeatedly usually it takes only a restart or two to get us going we've had more than that tonight definitely on to our fourth as a matter of fact in terms of restarts so getting in the rhythm is a big deal for these drivers and i think right now their attitudes are changing seeing that we've had multiple retirees never They're... mind there's a caution david oh goodness Oh, and the work of the number 63 yeah, crew man. down the drain. Yeah, Just another single car incident with the outside wall at turn one. I believe that's the 63 of Selena Thompson taking a tumble to the inside of the circuit yet again, blocking the track. Yeah, it's that, it's that same, just bumping the barrier on the outside, bending the suspension and turning the car in towards that... Uh, that safer barrier on the inside, and I think this time that's going to be the 63 cars day done. Yes, it's got to be at this point. And, um, a dead six cars who were out for a 22 lap stint, including our, uh, well, current championship leader, uh, Emily Howe, uh, as well as one more car who was out for 17. I'm wondering how many of those are going to take the call to come down pit road this time. As we expect to restart on, I believe, lap number 33, it'll be. So we'll have 82 laps, sorry, 92 laps to go. Still a lot of time to make things happen. But I think somebody might be looking at that number and working out if maybe we can get 28 laps in and split it in quarters. Um, I think it's going to be tough, but that's what you just start thinking about for me. You've got to start trying to back solve it and, and see what is the limit of what you can make the tank do and can you cut out a pit stop. So I'm going to try and be a little bit optimistic here. I think from the the things I was seeing a little bit further down the field, it looks like our drivers are slowly starting to figure it out. There was a lot more patience on show from most of the field that time. By uh, one example would be Hamilton Akabuzi that was right up the uh, right up the chuff of a uh, lilac's ear for a good couple of laps. There wasn't even choosing to make a move, just stayed behind, drafted. Saved fuel, uh, ran it sensible, nothing aggressive or... Oh, they're uh, back on pit road and that... Road. And involved in that, but maybe with not huge damage, is Championship Nintendo Lilac Zir. Are they going to wreck next in the infield road course? How about that? We're getting the replay here because it was catching us by surprise. A stack up on pit road? Bessie edited the box while they were already side by side with Kevin Yonder and Bobby Blowers. Yeah, that could have been unsafe. Just least nowhere to go. And oh. yeah, Lilac Zip right behind had to try and get out of it as Bobby Blowers kind of bounced off the wall almost. Yund is meatballed. Yund might be out of this race. Lilac's ear's got wheel damage as well. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Lilac's ear in her last race for Gear Cats was trying to go out there and take the championship, uh, at least try and take the team's championship for Gear Cats as a going away present. But with two of their cars already out this race and Lilac's ear currently having wheel damage, I don't know if that's quite going to be possible for her tonight. Did any of us have that on the bingo card for tonight's race? A pit road incident with four cars involved during the lane? It's not like it was an entry and exit there. They were caught up yeah, at the I, middle. I had an incident of someone trying to pit under green and, 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 and like speeding or spinning or something. I could never have imagined something like that. I don't think I've ever seen that. The damage that is fitable for Lilac, but this puts her significantly on the back foot and in a race where she had to really outperform Emily Howe quite significantly to have a chance at that championship. 
I, I don't know what to say, honestly. I think this is one of the first times uh, most of us have been speechless for this entire season. It, it's happened for good reasons before. It, it, it really yeah. has. And I think that's something we really need to focus on because as much as this uh, this race perhaps hasn't been the best showing from uh, this field of drivers so far, um, we can point to races like New Hampshire, we can point to races like Milwaukee and Kansas that have been they've pretty much been absolute bangers from end to end. And as I say, it's just the pressure of this event uh, is, is really uh, hampering the, the quality of the driving on show here tonight. But it definitely isn't indicative of how the rest of the season has been. A lot of today is only just rolling out of pit lane, but our leaders are coming down the start finish. Pace car is off and Lily Fraser will lead a couple laps as she leaves field green with Josh Tucker and Tommy Reynolds behind. Josh Tucker though being very aggressive at the start and is going to waste no time trying to take the lead. Fraser being shuffled onto that outside line, hitting all of the clean air, but taking no advantage from it as she gets completely railroaded. Tucker and Reynolds take P1 and 2 straight from her as Alex Miller had a sniff up the inside of turn 2, but the draft snake is starting already. Big run from Miller into turn three, straight to the inside, side by side through turn three, but no momentum for Alex Miller on that inside line at the moment, trying to keep some air on the nose to build some speed. But that's Fraser's tires up to temperature now, and she's got a little bit of help from the cars in front of her, so it's not going to be possible for the 49 car as he stays behind again. But there is a fight at the front of the field. Tommy Reynolds and Josh Tucker side by side. Reynolds forced to the outside by the number 44 car, doesn't quite make it work that time. And Tucker carrying all the momentum on the inside line of turn two and maintains the lead. But Reynolds gonna have all the slipstream once again, looks to the inside of turn three, very aggressively, put bit of contact between the two. Tucker forced to the outside. Reynolds using all of that rubber and grip on the inside, but even with that touch isn't enough to push Tucker backwards. And they're gonna continue side by side through turn four for the lead. Out of the stripe here, gonna be neck and neck with Tucker right up top. Josh gonna try to get the run off the corner. It looks like he's nicely gonna move through for first. Tommy Reynolds sent back here into second. It's been a spinning, revolving door of drivers getting the race lead, but Tucker, one of the few continuities from top to bottom to this point at the very least, he's been one of the most consistent drivers. And 36 laps in, he's showing his face once again, and for good reason, made that three wide move two cautions ago, and he showed exactly what he was made of there. And now it looks like he's back in the mix. Reynolds lying back and Lily Frazier rounding out that top three how about john hagan up to fifth and hagan we mentioned in qualifying one of the drivers coming over from htl here on the abn programming schedule and now getting that experience with the open wheel setting doing a pretty good job of that so far and up to fifth had some impressive speed in our first in qualifying wall. session there's miller in the wall that's that's heavy contact with the wall on the outside of turn one for alex miller that might be a little bit of suspension damage but Perhaps not. He seems to have managed to maintain some momentum off the exit of two and is going to be side by side with John Hagen for that P4 position that he just lost. Wow, that's going to be something to keep an eye on. While all that kerfuffle was happening, uh, Kevin Feimster hit the wall out of turn four, was redirected onto pit road and um, caused quite a, a heated discussion over, over comms there about uh, the penalty that was received from that. He's come down to serve that penalty now and he's back to run again, but multiple laps down in this race. Uh, uh, Delilah Dzir still running about half a lap down right now, but at fairly reasonable pace, just needs a caution to get the rest lap damage fixed and maybe deal her back into the race. But up front, it is still Tommy Reynolds leading Josh Shutter and Lee Fraser, who's got to be pitting soon, you'd have to think. 29 laps in this stint, and I always spent a lot of time under caution. But you can't extend a tank too much around here. 
I'd have to wonder if even past lap 25 is possible in this case. Now, Lily Frazier's reporting on our timing and scoring a 30 lap stint, and I figure that's mainly based upon tires here because most other drivers have not gotten anywhere close. Now, that reporting might not be fully accurate given how many yellow flags we've had. Everyone else is reporting a solid time. I mean, 19 laps for Renault's right now. I don't think he's got more than six or seven in him. And right now, going to be coming up down to the inside. Tommy Reynolds goes. That's a lap machine being put down. Looks to be not Kevin Feensburg, but instead, that's going to be one of our lappers here catching us a little bit of trouble looking at every single one of which there is Bobby Blowers back in the frame and being put behind Josh Tucker as well. So Sorry Tucker. to interrupt you there David, uh, Alex Miller proving that hitting that outside wall has done nothing to hamper his pace has just made a move for third place on Lily Fraser right down the inside of turn one carrying all of the overspeed and gets that position he was fighting so hard for but just listening on board I can hear lots of high engine revs coming out of that engine. He is in map one and he is pushing. 1.6 seconds to P2 of Josh Tucker. If anything, Miller might be pushing in response to that incident in here just to show he's still got it and nobody should be looking to take his place. Two seconds back of your leader, but he's in firm control. The third spot right now, Lily Frazier may be coming up, but as it stands, it's Hamilton Akabwezi in fifth. Hamilton, been a little quiet as of late, is back in here and actually has younger tires than everyone in front. With a 17-lap stint right now, should be able to stretch it longer and keep the pace. Going side by side with John Hagen. One is going to be sliding. Is that going to be Eli Sasek? It looks like, yes, it is. Sasek is going to get away with it with minimal, if no damage. Didn't even make contact with the wall, amazingly. Just managed to get to a halt and redirect it back towards the racing line with inches to spare so that'll be no damage and no caution we stay green here at indianapolis as this battle for the lead is as hot as ever and alex miller is looking to try and charge down this 2.2 second gap and i mean that is just incredible that is that's, that's one of those incidents that could have been an absolute aeroplane crash on the inside barrier. We've seen crashes that have ended up uh, down there on the exit of turn two, and they have ended a lot worse than what we just saw there. Fucking Sawyer caught the wall as well. Might have a little bit of lingering damage from that just in turn one. And Emily Howe now trying to make the move to get back into the top ten after making that pit stop under the last caution. Took fresh tires as well, so he's in Ooh, the perfect right condition. That, that's, oh Parker God, they are. That's Parker Alexander going for a move and uh, Carmen, uh, Carmen Sienna and uh, Pacey White and shuffling. Uh, sorry, Carmen... <laughs> oh, that's Emily Howe in the wall. Championship leaders making mistakes left, right and centre. Emily Howe touching the wall on the outside of turn one. It's going to shuffle her outside of the top ten and Tucker Sawyer is going to take that position. And now she's up behind her Arrowhead Racing teammate of Carmen Sienna. Will there be any team orders here? Will Carmen let Emily through, or is, has Emily got a little bit of lingering damage? It's something to uh, to keep an eye on. But if we if we can garner anything from Alex Miller's a little bit of contact with the wall, it shouldn't affect her pace too much, if at all. I know Carmen will want to try and, and help out Emily here. Um, I think that's very much been part of been sort of coaching people through running this in the last couple of weeks, and part of that behind. Uh, fellow Winstell runner also probably too aggressive but you can see that Carmen just doesn't quite have the pace Parker is gonna go to the inside as Tony Reynolds continues to lead by four tenths of a second and Emily House slots down to 13th place now as Partizan tries to work on the lap car Bobby Blowers One driver going to be down into pit road. That is Lily Frazier. There goes the number 13 dropping down and in. And Lily's going to come through. Misses a stall just slightly. And at that angle, I'm surprised it wasn't a second miss in a row. Lily's in. And this will open up our pit window. 35 lap stint reported for Frazier. And those caution laps doing a huge favor for the driver of the 13. And now it's all in the hands of the drivers who are on a much younger stint. Tommy Reynolds with 25 laps in the books has stretched it this far. Maybe a few more left. In him. Here comes Josh Tucker and Alex Miller and subsequent company. It's still tight among those like Brennan Gregg. Gregg gonna let 
Dale Markowski go here and still drivers within a few tenths of a second but overall now I think everyone prepping for what could be the first full green flag pit cycle of the night now for Tommy Reynolds and company younger rubber than a few competitors but still a little bit older than those who are coming up like Hamilton Acabuese stuck in the middle What's it going to take here for a driver like Reynolds or someone like Josh Tucker to figure it out, even though they're not really in the best position, but definitely not in the worst? Well, Tucker has a decision to make here at the moment. They, Him and Reynolds have been gifted a bit of an opportunity to try and pull away from the rest of the field, assuming we do get a nice green flag stop here. So Tucker could start to leapfrog him with uh, Tommy Reynolds to try and build that gap to, uh, gap to the third place car of Alex Miller. Uh, but at the moment, it does look like Tucker's just trying to stay in that slipstream and save fuel off Tommy Reynolds and hopefully for him, leave Reynolds uh, to hang out to dry uh, a little bit and have to cut that stint a lot shorter than Tucker might otherwise need to. But a little bit of a, almost a cat has been thrown amongst the pigeons here because Lily Fraser has come out between Tucker and Alex Miller. So could start throwing some slipstream uh, in the way of the number 49. We got that's going to be Tommy Reynolds in pit lane. On the road course and coming up. Where's that, where's that going to end up, though? Because Tommy Reynolds has just pitted. Ryan Pennell is still moving on the infield, and it looks like we may not get a caution unless that number two car comes to a stop. This could oh, be a disaster. This is worrying. He's still going. Fantastic call for car 11. Such a huge shot out by turn one. It threw him all the way to the inside wall, past the apron, and onto the road course section. Oh. Uh, the sort of loops back through off the, off the back straightaway. And down Ooh. onto the access road, it looks like is gonna just about get away with it. And so the pit cycle should be allowed to continue as Josh Tucker comes through and stays out another lap. Yeah, Tucker's been doing a lot of fuel saving in the slipstream of that number 11 car. And fortunately for, uh, fortunately for Tucker, Pennell had that front right tire on the car still, so it was able to actually turn left and keep us under green here as the track temp Climbs up to 51.7. Some understeer is going to start creeping into these cars as Tommy Reynolds comes back out on track. A couple of tenths of a second uh, in front of Kevin Feimster. But uh, Josh Tucker, 5.6 seconds away from putting Tommy Reynolds a lap down. And that's John Hagen calling for the pit lane. I think this is well and truly our cycle for everyone who stayed out under that last caution. Josh Look Tucker. Down. Also, I put, and you see how quickly have to bleed the speed off gets it down to pit mode speed perfectly in that number 44 car but i wouldn't be surprised to see multiple people get caught speeding if we have a many more green flag stops here and it looks like we have a lot more it looks like we are well and truly into that cycle of this race Omen bigger than at the head of an abn champ car world series field hamilton akabuzi cycles to the lead of this race on a 26 lap long stint at the moment, it's just smart driving from him so far to try and keep it as clean as possible. Almost getting involved in that first uh, that first caution checkup that that took two Gearcats cars out of the race, and he's come out. Well, he's currently sat just behind uh, Lily Fraser and taking advantage of all of that slipstream to save even more fuel. Hamilton Akabuzi is going to extend the stint a very long way as Frankie Wynn is now down on pit lane as well. We saw that patience from the seven car a little bit earlier on. This is why saw the traffic ahead, didn't really want any part of it and using its fuel save and now still has a fuel save behind Lily Fraser. So we can maybe eat out a little bit more. But no, now they come down pit road here. Dead's on the anchors and are dead to perfection. You can tell which drivers have put a lot of practice into this. They hit down to 60 mile an hour right when they need to and not a moment sooner so the question is now then that smart driving where is that going to bring Hamilton Akabuzi out uh, just following the uh, our assumed race leaders Josh Tucker he's got Pacey Wygent between him and Tommy Reynolds at the moment gaps about 0.9 of a second between our two old race leaders so how long is this pit stop going to be for Hamilton Akabuzi and where is he going to come out on track The 7.9 second stop for the number seven car. Total pit lane time of 33 and a half seconds. That's about the fastest we've seen so far tonight. Uh, so an imp impressive run for four tire stop and we'll slot out just behind Josh oh. Tucker. And we'll have a chance to grab onto the, the slipstream here. 
So gained maybe a couple of seconds in that cycle and now has the more fuel by a couple of laps as a... Uh, just a, a very well-timed and well-executed pit cycle for Hamilton once again. Currently running P12, but net P2 and well within sight of Josh Tucker. It's finally got going here, gang. We've got a race on our hands. We've got 10 cars who still haven't pit. Mostly cars who came down under that last caution. Uh, amazingly, Lilith Zir is a P9, only 12 seconds off the lead that Parker Alexander currently holds. Which, considering that she's still got a fair bit of, of wheel damage on that car from that pit lane incident, is a is a fantastic show and really putting the pressure on the 83 of Emily Howe. As uh, Dale Markowski and Ruby Esther's going side by side a little bit in that leading group. Josh Tucker only five seconds off the back of this train. So everyone should be able to pit and stay lead lap, but it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky. It's um they're gonna need to make sure they execute their pit stop correctly as um looks like Lilith Zeri making the calls come down pit road this time is gonna Mo try Perry and undercut well. a little bit. Yeah, Mo Perry making that call to come in as well. As uh, it's Ruby Estes coming down pit lane two and follows both of those drivers in. So nice clean pit stop needed for the 89 and the 28 crew this time by, especially to put try and put Lilac Zeri back in position. She probably needs one caution or two to bring her back into this one. But there she is up on the jacks, back off the jacks and rolling almost straight away. A great stop uh, for car number 89. And cycles back down. I think we'll go one lap down to Parker Alexander here. Mm -hmm. But it's still lead lap on cycle once these remaining seven cars pit. And they're going to have to soon. It's 24 laps, Parker Alexander. And it's been a green flag run from the set of pit stops to this point. So just championship update then. Emily Howe is going to be a lap over Lilac Zia at the moment. So the last thing Zia wants right now is that caution to come out because it's going to put Emily Howe in a, a much, much, much stronger position than she already was. Lyle spotted in behind Hunter Peach here. I think that was uh, Emily Howe calling for pit lane. Um, and it sure is Emily Howe flying down and just about gets down to pit road speed as well. No issues so far, <laughs> at least in this cycle for our championship contenders. And Emily Howe, did we ask him for four and fuel as well? Yeah, there's a small question, a small question mark over the 83's head. At the moment, she's missed the box. Emily Howe's gone a little bit past the box and has had to reverse into it. Uh, but there was a small question as to whether or not she had any damage. Doesn't look like uh, the 83 crew have done any repairs, but a smooth stop uh, from the Arrowhead racing team to get Emily Howe back out on track really quite quick there, even after that... Uh, that missed pit stall, but the question is, where is Lilac Zia? If I just try and jump on board with her a moment, she is on the start finish straight now. So good gap for Emily Howe, but not, obviously not quite up to speed yet. But fortunately for her, she's going to pop out in the slipstream of another car. So that's going to help her get up, back up to speed much easier. The gap between the two championship contenders is 10.8 seconds. And we have some cars pitting now. Still a couple of cars out, it looks like, as a, actually I stand corrected, everyone has had to come down pit road here, which has cycled a lot of cars back onto the lap now. I think I have 22 cars holding onto the lead lap. Um, and to cycle everyone back through to sort of their, their standard running positions. And it's Josh Tucker who currently leads from Hamilton, Akabuese, and it is a very close fight, and I think... As we saw in the earlier stint, the number seven car will be using this as a bit of a fuel save. Save the fuel, save the tires, and then go for an undercut once Tucker has to pit. Use everything you've got left and, and try and have a cleaner stop and, and jump the 44. But the 44 had a pretty good stop himself, and so... Might have been a pretty simple for the experience of the seven to get him to up to second place, but that last spot is going to be the hardest, you've got to think. Yeah, Josh Tucker, a very, very experienced uh, Talara IRA team driver. It's pretty much been his main car for the last few years on uh, the iRacing Motorsport Simulator. 
he's taken a little bit of dip into sports cars over the last uh, the last few months or so. Of course, coming off the back of that PEC Championship victory at uh, the the French 24-hour race that we covered this past weekend. So, of course, spirits high in that 44 car right now for Josh Tucker, carrying all that confidence into this race. Perhaps that, well, he almost definitely thinks he's got a shot at it. We know he's quick enough to do it, but we haven't seen a fight between him and Hamilton Akabuzi yet. So I think that's going to be something really interesting to watch towards the end. Closest battle on track. Currently, looks like we've got a, a big cluster for 14th place. Eli Sassett leading that train. But the car's a little bit fanned out uh, further back. No one trying to make a move just yet. And the 7th the seven is just a bit menacing on that 44. Uh, but I'd be surprised if we see a move any time in the next 5-10 laps, I think. As we've seen quite often, do we play that patient game? And um, we look further back in the field to see... Uh, some potential moves and shapes people have been put. A little bit off cycle by uh, maybe instance earlier around the race and their various strategy calls. Trying to now, they've had a bit of a chance to take hold of the race to, to make some moves and get back up through the field to where they believe they belong. Looking all throughout the field, and of course, we're keeping our eye on this, notably, just the longest run we've had so far, and everyone getting themselves nicely settled in after that first green flag run. Everyone now going to be much more dispersed relative to our early starts, and as usual, what a green flag pit stop does, if you've been watching with us all throughout the season here in the Champ Car World Series, and... As per usual, the best of the best often find their way to the front by any means necessary. Top two right now, well, they're familiar faces in Josh Tucker and Hamilton Acabuese, two drivers who find themselves very, very antiquated with the IRA team. But tonight, maybe a spotlight for some drivers we haven't touched upon all too much all throughout the season as winning contenders. Tommy Reynolds is having a hell of a night right now, the bottom step of the podium, maybe not up there fighting for the win directly, but all things considered, Reynolds doing a real good job of hanging with the best of the best up in front. And he's been within about a second and a half all throughout. So really holding himself there is an accolade in itself because he's several seconds up on another driver we have not seen this season. John Hagen, the race rookie, is coming through. And as such, he's been the top brand new driver of the day in fourth right now and holding himself up very nicely. There's a few other drivers we haven't mentioned all too much of. There's Hunter Peach right now in the number six machine 15th place Dale Margowski's eventually gotten up to 21st but it's been a night additionally of new drivers guys we haven't seen all too much of all throughout this campaign and they've got themselves up here in the mix and notably a few of our regulars who are now putting in their career best runs Tommy Reynolds maybe with an opportunity to gain back in and if Hamilton Akabwezi and Josh Tucker keep supplying him the rope he can climb back up and maybe fight for it we're past the first half of the race by the way six 64 laps in out of 125, well, that can only mean one thing. We've now got ourselves a total of just about 61 laps remaining. It's going to be 61 at the stripe this time by as your leader come right through. So, with that being said, very few drivers having a shot to go for it up in front, but battles continue. Lily Frazier now going to be working with Bruce Silva, and Lily drops down to the inside at the stripe, going to swoop down through one and two. Here comes Lily, dropping nicely and easily into the corner and trying to take the pass. Yeah, yeah Lily. Over. Sorry, Olivia, take it away. Lily had a bit of contact in turn one on the previous lap, which gave the 36 car the run to make a move. Uh, Kevin Fumes to ahead, a lap car made heavier contact, went down onto the apron, kept it rolling to uh, avoid a caution coming out but does have a mechanical meatball flag in his day. He's gone from bad to worse after that penalty onto pit road. But the 13 early phrases were bouncing back pretty well, getting back past Bruce Silver and um, looking to try and close that gap back up to the 16 of win. But here comes Park Alexander, going to try and go two for one into turn number oh, one here. Better. Parker Alexander, who we've seen be so aggressive in the opening stanza of this race, makes it two for one through the first two corners. Uh, the first two corners of IMS. Is that smoke in the background? Sorry. Uh, looks like an incident for Pacey Wygent. Oh, no. 
but just as yeah, just hit the wall pretty hard uh, in turn one, and it died hard enough to slide out of two. I think that card gonna be limping it back to pit road, and that could be day done for the double zero car as well. But uh, but what if? Ooh. Yeah, that's. I think that's the replay of uh, Casey Wygen hitting the wall. That's a bit yeah. of bent suspension as, uh, and then spinning through two as well. Yep. Not fun. Not fun to bend the suspension like that, and then uh, being at such high speed as well. But Parker Alexander with uh, a couple of the moves of the race so far, going two for one into turn one twice. A great bit of driving from uh, from that driver. I still think Move the Race has to go to Eli Sasser for that incredible save out of two. Uh, who now finds himself in 13th place, so has, has made the most of that second chance and is well within this sort of midfield pack. Um, but does have to pit fairly soon. 19 laps on this fuel tank and on that set of tyres. Uh, everyone did take tyres coming down that last pit stop, as you can imagine. Uh, and so now it's just about how long you've been running and. Um, and how has she been saving as well? The caution's out. Here and we that... go then. Ooh, that makes things very interesting. And it looks like it might have been the uh, the 15 of Kevin Feimster. But that's the... I don't know why that was a caution. Well, we're checking back on Kevin Feimster here, and in all honesty, before he was down on pit road, I didn't see that there was an issue in telemetry. Yeah. It's because he was slow uh, ah. on the pit lane exit. That's what's that done That seemed it. pretty saved, though. To, to me, that's felt he had it rolling at the very I, least. I'm inclined but... to agree, but uh, we did have a couple of cars on pit lane who would have exited the pit lane at speed. Uh, so I believe the automated system uh, always picks up a slow car on pit lane exit and throws a caution for it because the last thing you want is cars that have just come out of the pit lane on stone cold tires to be having to check up or do any weird maneuvering to try and get around a car that's basically stopped on the inside there. Yeah. It looks like Mo Perry had just gotten passed by the leader of Josh Tucker. We'll get the lucky god in this one. Lily Fraser had just come down pit road, got back out cleanly. We'll have to take a wave around, but obviously does have the fuel to do so and I'd imagine every single car in this lead group is gonna take that hard down pit road and reset because as we come to the end of lap 69 we are looking at let me do some maths real quick a 50 we've currently 57 lap, lap run I think once we go green yeah and 27 is right on the edge of what might be possible on fuel save so two stop for some maybe a couple of drivers might be looking at a one-stop. This is also a chance for Lylat Zir to hopefully get the rest of that damage fixed on that car. And we can have a, a, a straight-up shootout between our two championship contenders. Long stop for the 89 crew. I think that's definitely a little bit of a damage repair. The engine is off, so loads of optionals being taken by Lylat Zir to try and get that car straight and back out. I thought she'd have a chance to maybe jump a couple of the cars here with how much fuel she was saving behind Brennan Greg. I think, you, I think you'd rather have that car as fixed up as they can mm. get it because this is now the phase of the race where you do want to push. Remember, Lilac's here, edged to pit road and actually wasn't caught up to the field. Mm -mm. By the time we went back green, held onto the lead lap with some great pace. And this is the uh, this is the recovery from that. Our field just coming into turn three now, and Lilac should have time to to hope that the rest of this fits and get back out on track. Uh, as it I looks like we had two cars stay out, Bryce Sosia and Nicholas Pressy, both MPM cars. They want them point. <laughs> choosing to cycle to the lead of the field. They have 12 laps on the fuel tank and that set of tires, maybe about halfway through their stint. But we mentioned how difficult it was going to be to fuel safe for the one stop. They might be thinking, well, everyone's got two stops going this race. We don't need to come down top off we'll still have two to go we'll take the trap position thank you very much i think the difficult thing for lilac zir here though is going to be the fact that she's got to go pretty much at speed around an entire lap so it's going to burn off quite a lot quite a bit of fuel trying to catch uh, the, the back of the field for this one so it's probably going to shorten at least one of her stints towards the end of the race here maybe maybe this is the time for her to not go for that fuel save strat and just 
focus on that pace, and this will, if anything, help get a little bit of heat into those tyres and um, give her a chance to feel out how the car feels. We imagine that all the damage that can be fixed has been fixed, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the car's back to new condition as it was at the start of the race. There could still be some some lingering issues behind the wheel at 89 car, and um, there's actually a pretty good chance to, to get those fell out as you will roll up to the back of the field here as they go down the back stretch. You can see in the background a few holes of the golf course that are, that lines uh, and intersect this property, in fact. There's the golf course on the inside of the circuit? Uh, there's, there's, a, there's part of a golf course. No, wow. no, one's ever, no one's ever mentioned that. Like It's, a, it's no a very idea. little known fact, but there's a golf course partially inside the circuit. Oh, we got some beautiful shots of it as well. No drone cam today, though, I should think, David. <laughs> I'm not thinking about the drone camera tonight. Let's just get it overhead and uh, we'll go from there, I'm thinking. It's, a, it's definitely a controversial road course, I'll say, but I've got to say, it's one of those ones that I really like. You've got to really think about how you thread a car around the circuit. But that is not what we're thinking about here tonight. We are looking at that big strip, of, that two and a half mile strip of tarmac around the outside of it as the pace car pulls in. Bryce Saucier is going to lead the field to green this time by. We are waiting for that green flag to be shown by Bonnie. He's got it up in the air and it's waved and we are go, go, go with 54 laps to go. Nicholas Pressey holding off the back of Saucier and trying to defend a little bit from Josh Tucker, but it isn't going to be enough on this particular restart as Tucker slides to the inside, holds that car nice and steady on that line. Building up a little bit of momentum to try and start looking at Saucier. Keeps the air on the nose. Saucier defends aggressively to the inside. Tucker, though, got Hamilton Akabuzi for company as uh, Nick Pressey is starting to slide back into the field and, in fact, touches the wall on the outside. Saucier back down to the inside of turn three, taking all of the air off Josh Tucker's nose as Tucker is looking for any way past the 0 7 right now. He tries to cycle back to the lead of this race. I'm going to make a, uh, a prediction here. I don't think anyone at the front feels safe, and I think they're planning on two stops, and they're planning to send it so far. But you have Josh Tucker trying to go for that move on Bryce Socia, and good player through turn two here to take the lead. Under the caution. And that is a big incident. Oh, Tommy Reynolds is involved, among others. Is that why Xero involved as well? It pops us like it and Emily Howe. Both of them, are they, I think, are they both out? Lilac Zier's got nose and rear wing damage. Lilac Zier's meatballed. Got Tad checking up for the incident. Looks like Emily Howe just had the wall. Emily Howe's great. And got, oh, what a replay this is. So that's Lilac Zier, just gets, just straight up dumped by the, uh, by Ruby Estes, who wasn't expecting the checkup so sort of early, but when you see what light to see ahead, you can understand why there's a car upside down here. And it's Tommy Reynolds who gets the, the worst of it. Um, and Emily Howe getting very fortunate, and that could be the championship decided move. I was about to say exactly the same thing. I think that's championship decided. Somersault. Hi, oh my, for Tommy Reynolds. That's horrible, but we're going to look on board with Emily Howe and see how lucky that 83 crew just got. Here's a look back from Emily Howes on board. Great camera perspective here over that, uh, the, the left shoulder of your current championship leader. Trying to get some air on the outside, a little bit means, oh, clips the wall on the outside of turn one and on the brakes, pulling to the inside and almost gets clipped by, was that Alex Miller who went by? Uh, I have that to double really check. Close. But absolute carnage coming through turns one and two there. And, and in all of that, you can't help but feel sorry for Lilac here, who's basically had the championship decided for her tonight. I mean... Emily Howe comes down... It was going to be a long shot with, with the difference in points. Um, and at, at, at the big ovals, a lot is left up to chance. And unfortunately, it's just... Yeah, it's... Not the way you want a championship to end as a driver or as a spectator, really. Um, but I'm sure A9 will do whatever they can to try and get that car rolling again in case Very short stop from the they A8. have any A8. chance of uh, of staying in this race. Very short stop from the 83 crew there to get a 
And we have car top. I think tops off with a little bit of fuel. I don't think. Yeah, no tires for the 83 any car. Damage. There's, there's, there's every chance that uh, she came down just to check if the car was straight, and it looks yeah. like uh, the 83 car, uh, 83 crew, have had a nice gander over those uh, those bendy carbon fiber bits of suspension at the front, and uh, decided that that's all good to go. And from first pod, it seems like that could be the 89's day done, and that could be championship decided. Yeah, 10 minute repairs for Lilac Zier in her last race for Gear Cats, and just not being able to bring that championship home in the way that she wanted, unfortunately. If, if I know anything about Lilac Zier, I know she's gonna get that car fixed up, bring it out, and just see what she can do, what spots she can pick up, but mm -hmm. it was already a 30 point deficit. I. <laughs> I can't imagine what sort of incident would have to happen on the remaining cars to uh, cycle this one through. And again, it's just not anything she had any control over. Just trying well, to get get rode up for that big incident. And um, yeah, get cars behind, not checking up as much as she was and into the wall. Well, you say that, Olivia, but Emily Howe hasn't been flawless tonight. She's been in that outside barrier a couple of times. There's no reason that... Uh, any anything else might befall any of these drivers here tonight because it has been quite a chaotic Arrowhead 500 and we've still got 50 laps to go so literally anything can happen. We've already had one championship contender taken out. Don't want to wish ill uh, ill will on any of the, any other drivers in the field but there's every chance that could happen to Emily Howe as well. I, I just don't know if Lyle can get that car back out to... And to race get a 30 point mm. gain on wherever Emily finishes because that E3 car is still running, is still ticking off laps. And there's 19 other cars on the lead lap here to, um, to try and race this one out. So as much as it may feel like the wind has been taken out of the sails of the championship fight tonight here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we still have a 500 kilometer an hour race to be decided. Josh Tucker in the number 44 uh, VOR Delara IR18 is going to lead the field to green again, this time with the buffer of Bryce Saucier behind to the driver that has been challenging him for the race win. Uh, of Hamilton Akabuzi. Here they come, waiting for that green flag to fly. It is in the air, and we are go, go, go. Bryce Saucier getting a really nice start compared to the rest, to, compared to Josh Tucker. And he's going to go for this lead straight away, side by side into turn one, and snatches first place from Josh Tucker, who is now under pressure from Hamilton Akabuzi. You can see the 44 trying to set something up. He's going to try and draft back here on the bat stretch. Bryce also immediately goes to break that draft and might be able to hold on as actually John Hayden comes flying past to try and take the spot from the number seven but cannot make it stick. We'll have to slot him back behind. And again, we're going to see that, that sort of draft snake show full force on the start finish straight here. It's the 07 leads, the 44 leads, the 7 leads, the 81. And they'll go in that formation again into turn one trying to peek out for a little bit of clean air, but really all trying to run that bottom lane. They know that they can't. Spinner in the back, and we're going to go under caution yet again. I'm trying to figure out who that was, but that was, again, I think another bit of contact with the wall, and Alex Miller is involved in this one. Eli Sasek is going to be destroyed after this one, and for all the work he did, it once again is another driver going down the drain. Caution's out. So from what I can see, I think... Frankie Wayne cuts to the inside of uh, cuts to the inside of Nicholas pressing in the short shoot between one and two, and there's just a. I think Frankie was maybe expecting Nick Pressy to swing a little bit more to the outside, but Nick Pressy turns in for the corner as Frankie Wynn turns out to try and open up the line through turn two. And then just trying to Eli Sasek checks up as Frankie Wynn slides back up onto the circuit. Uh, Alex Miller, not really any time to react, slams into the back of Sasek. 
loses that front end and maybe a little bit of suspension damage now for the 49, but it's gonna have to uh, it's gonna have to be seen. Uh, it seems like the, the old uh, adage, uh, ringing through again, cautions, breed cautions, and we had that long green flag run through the middle portion of this race, but we're now back into this spin cycle, and um, second uh, major incident sort of coming through that short shoot between one and two in as many restarts. The thing is, though, Frankie Wynn has been relatively flawless in all the seasons that we've, uh, in all the races that we've seen him, and picking up two podiums, including one on debut as uh, Bryce Saucier pulls into the pit lane. So a rare misjudgment from what we've seen from Wynn, and it's going to effectively end their race, I reckon. And definitely Eli Sussex. As we see a number of cars are choosing to come down pit road here. Bryce Saucier choosing to stop. Um. Nicholas Pressy, I think, got caught up in some of that running. Uh, and so it's just that 07 car left for MPEM. Uh, but those cars that were extending, now realizing this is the chance to pit. It's going to be one stop from here. But again, those cars that pit a couple of cautions ago, also pretty confident they can make it with one more stop. And so they're willing to stay out. It's Josh Tucker leading Colin Hackerboyce and Carmen Sienna. Currently, if you're front three on the grid, Cutter Sawyer and uh, Brennan Dredd also staying out in this cycle. Carmen Sienna, we know who loves this sort of racing and loves this car and loves this track, is going to be rubbing her hands together at being in the top three of the Arrowhead 500. Her big special event that she absolutely adores and has done a fantastic job of organizing for us here this year, knocking on the door of, uh, of, well, of, of the top two at the moment, but we'll definitely be happy with the podium so far. As I believe still one more lap of pacing set to run here. We have 16 cars still on the lead lap as Lily Fraser pulls out of the box to try and beat the pace car and will do so just getting a, a little bit extra repair done to that number 13 machine you see and these cars really shouldn't have been through the wars as much as they have been at this point these are not normally cars that can afford to take a hit and, and, and carry on going but we've seen a lot of cars come in for those extended repairs to try and pit something up to at this point as long as you can keep running and, and clicking some laps in you're gonna gain some spots Ruby Esther's also one who was coming down pit road for some extended repairs, of course, after that contact with the 89 car under the previous caution. I think got away with it on this one, but again, still that lingering damage. And um, that could be a deciding factor of which cars have managed to keep their nose clean in this one. Um, and which cars might might be carrying some, uh, some additional drag, some additional... Uh, adjustments to the wheel geometry and um, it's a very maybe can't quite give it a suspension. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at this point, you can't, if you can't fix it, you've got to you, you've got to treat it as how the car is and, and try and drive around it. Mm -hmm. But as far as I know, Josh Tucker uh, and How to Race have been pretty uh, issue free so far in this race. Okay, and I mean, yeah. them two lead in the field to create the wealth of experience. IR18 aces at the front of the field, pace car down and in, and let's get things going for lap number 82. Josh Tucker brings us back with Hamilton Akabwezi trailing, and Carmen Sienna up to the top three, another driver to take note of. Now running into one and two, everyone's single file, nice and easy, and hopefully here we can get ourselves back into that second rhythm with Hamilton already looking a bit higher, only to cross right over and look down and under to get that run moving. 
Yeah, Habsaka is using the clean out on the outside of Josh Tucker to get the car turned in and then underneath him to get the run uh, on the exit of turn two and take uh, the lead of this race into turn three. Carmen Siena not able to do anything from in the back for now, but Habsaka Nakabuzi has been so patient in this race so far. Finally taking the opportunity to move to the front and it's going to try and lead this race to the end. It's a very close race in further back on the fringes of the top 10 here. Alex Miller diving through past Emily Howe as side by side go Bryce Sosa and Brennan Red. Okay, Bryce on those fresh tyres just came down pit road and now starting to try and cut back through the field on that fresh rubber and maybe charge towards the top four who have a bit of a breakaway right now, more than a second gap as there's the number seven who's going to lead the way with a 44 96 behind. Alex Miller though looking to the inside of John Hagen right now, looking to make amends for that uh, mistake, not quite checking up for Eli Sasek's incident that brought out the last caution. Almost touches the barrier on the outside of turn one, but that's Josh Tucker going to the inside of Hamilton Akabuzi to take the lead of this race into turn three once again. And Carmen Siena looks like she wants to follow, but gets into the dirty air of Tucker, but still manages to get that move done with the lessened aero grip on that car. Fantastic little bit of driving from both of now the race leaders as Hamilton Akabuzi has slid back down into P3. And she's looking to take the lead. Carmen Siena looking to the inside of Tucker into turn one and does take the lead. Tucker though not fighting that very hard, perhaps going to take the opportunity to save a little bit of fuel. Hamilton Akabuzi think, maybe thinking the same, but dropping back a touch from these two right now. But Carmen Siena is going to be your race leader with 41 laps to go. Yeah, and there's five cars who stayed out under that last portion in this lead group. It's your top four, and now Brennan Red down in sixth. Those cars are going to have to save a little bit more to make it to the end. And I think Carmen Sierra is going to worry about that later. Maybe she's already saved a little bit in that last stint. Josh Tucker and uh, how she's supposed to see, I think, choosing now to be that time. Let Carmen get those laps led. And maybe, again, we've seen such clean stops from these two uh, previously in the green flag cycles. Maybe they're trying to do it again uh, once we get to that point and, and jump to 96 on the strategy. But for now, it is... Carmen at the lead of this field. Track temps high and the pressure even higher just to switch the focus back to Alex Miller for a moment. He's moved up three spots since he came out of the pit lane to take that front nose repair. Fresh tyres in these almost 53 degrees Celsius track temps really uh, coming into play for the driver of the number 49 here as he's really starting to put the pressure onto Brennan Gregg for P6. Watching the mid-path fights develop here, you're looking at Bryce Sosier with Nicholas Pressy among others, and Tucker Sawyer right now going to be just up ahead of that 07. Podium, a little bit different as we mentioned, both Hamilton Akabuesi and Josh Tucker taking a bit of a back seat right now as Carmen Siena now gets the opportunity to play lap after lap. So with the 96 now up and in front, we're still looking at the remainder of our pit cycle, which of course has been a bit more mixed up as of recent, thanks to those most recent changes in regards to cautions. A few coming out in succession, so now drivers especially have to be on their toes about making it to the end. I, I think from here, 38 laps to go, one more pit stop should be the move for just about everyone. But the question more so becomes who comes in and when. A few drivers may lying back, Carmen Siena in particular, taking the opportunity to be aggressive, and we see a few other fights all throughout the field. Carmen going to come across the stripe here with a hard charging Josh Tucker. Maybe Josh can have a chance to go for the race lead sometime soon. And you see Hamilton Akabwezi, if he ride on board, lying back big time. A few different ideas for strategy coming in together. Maybe lying back might be the best case scenario long term, but Carmen Siena going for those laps led. Yeah, Tucker and Akabwezi using this opportunity to save fuel. And letting Carmen Siena have her moment in the sun, but punch that hole in the air for them to both just sit and slide through. 
uh, they're going to be burning so much less fuel a lap than she is. Because you got to remember, Carmen is basically hitting a wall of air uh, and pushing all of that, pushing all the air out of the way and leaving that big hole for Tucker and Akabuzi to drive through, which is going to reduce the drag on both of their cars so much. They, they're not even at full throttle here. They're, they're at half, three quarter throttle, but still maintaining the speed. That's how much of a difference the slipstream makes here at Indianapolis. And again, one of the key things about this track, it's a long lap, it's more than 40 seconds, and that means you can get on and off pit road and stay on the lead lap if you are close enough to the lead of the train. So what that does mean is as soon as the window opens, that's when you might see people start to come in to try and cover off that late caution. Because actually, if it does come out, the people who have pitted and have the advantage is almost like a a road course strategy uh, into like a stock car. This is one of those tracks where you can pull that off as well. Yeah, one of those drivers is definitely going to be thinking about that is Josh Tucker with all of his sports car experience. Uh, we know that in a series like IMSA or the WBC, pit lane doesn't open until a lap after the caution comes out as we watch Bryce Saucier making a move for position into turn three there and does make it stick that time. Uh, but Josh Tucker will know from his experience in sports cars uh, that your best bet, get that, try and get that stop in early if you can. As, as you say, Olivia, to cover off that, lack, that last caution because you're all going to be bunched up together uh, before anyone is allowed to make those pit stops and you're just going to naturally cycle out to the lead. I think for now, the real question is whether that lead can make it to, imagine we said, maybe 22 to 27 laps be in our window. We saw people that stand much past that with some cautions, but that lead... Uh, Trio is on 22 laps of the stint. They'd need to make it another between five and eight to sort of get into that window. Oh, and cool. I think that's why we're seeing these cars hand back off the back of the 96 car. They want to try and do everything they can to stretch that fuel and get them into that window because they might not have the choice of when they're pitting. They might be forced to come in as at this moment window opens. So that's the, the moment the fuel tank comes out. The drivers that are in the box seat for this race, if we stay green to the end right now, Bryce Saucier, Alex Miller, Parker Alexander, Emily Howe, and John Hagen, all inside the top 10, uh, uh, inside the top 10, having stopped only 13 laps ago under caution. So they've got plenty of fuel on board. These three can push right to the end of this race. And in fact, uh, sorry, these, uh, these five, I think, I can't even count. These five can push all the way to the end, end of the race and are, in fact, within slipstream range of each other. So are going to be fighting towards the end here if it stays green. We hope they on some cars further down the field. Uh, we have Blake Henderson currently the only car one lap down. Pacey Wyden has gotten rolling again and is currently five lap down in the double zero car. And Lila Zier, after 10 minutes, down on pit road has re-emerged, but it's eight laps down in this event. With Bobby Blouse a further four laps back, and um, then it's just Ryan, uh, sorry, Lily Pelletier Sharp who's running, but is only clicking off lap 31 right now. I think that's a, a little bit of strategy to try and score some points for the team there. Yeah, absolutely. And she have time to jump at least a few more cars. Um, but it's going to take a, a footnote to this current lead battle where, once again, we're questioning whether it is possible for those leaders to make it to the window for their final stop of the race and to hold that trap position or whether they'll have to come down extra time and, um, and potentially sacrifice this run that they've had going for the entire race so far. A little bit of a communication over uh, over voice chat from some of the drivers. Uh, I think that was Ruby Estes commenting on how the car isn't dead. Yeah, Alex Miller up into the wall on the exit of turn one. Uh, just as I was about to talk about him, stuck in the dirty air of Pacey Wygent and complaining about the dirty air, uh, which is what brought out that little chuckle from me earlier. He's been struggling behind Pacey for the last few laps, and I think he's 
nursing a little bit of damage on that car now, but it, as, as we always say, it's going to be something to keep an eye on. But again, that dirty air as the track temp uh, has stayed stable, uh, but the but the tyres have gone off of, of the guys who have who pitted later now, and they're really starting to struggle with it as Carmen Siena calls for the pit lane. It's going to be our first pitter of those earlier stoppers. It might not. It might be too early. This might be Carmen's race. It is unraveling. We said the window 22 to 27. Carmen no, need 28. It's not impossible, but it's right on the limit of what is possible. And I think we can expect again with those cars following pretty closely behind. I think we expect the 44 and the 7 to both continue on. Extend on the fuel they've saved Carmen behind Sienna. it. Carmen spins on entry. Oh my god. Into pit road and destroy. Can you believe it? No. Just to pull out in front of another car in the fast lane. Cars are solid in the fast lane. Carmen Sienna seemingly forgetting that and almost getting into an incident with two other cars that pull onto the pit lane. That was close. My, oh my, that's about as bad as it can get there. And Carmen Sienna going to get some trouble. We're looking at it one more time. And pit road getting dicey as drivers pass by Carmen Sienna's number 96, nearly destroying another, in of course, driver getting involved. And just like that, we almost saw ourselves a caution, perhaps due to that yellow flag and a rather pit road incident. We're in red, also making the call again. We'll have to do 27 laps now on that strategy. We think it should just be possible. It's not going to be fun for any of these cars who are pitting now. Still got now two cars out on this strategy. It looks like just Tucker and, uh, and Hamilton. I took a call in for pit lane, though. That'll be 26 for the 44 car. Does number seven have anything extra to go for an overcut and maybe give a little bit more push in the final laps of the race? Definitely. If there's anyone that, yes. we've, that we've seen in this race that can go longer and make that word, it's Hamilton Akapuzi, who does stay out yet again. It, the question is, though, how many extra laps is he going to go? I, I'm going to assume one, but Akabuzi has been in the slipstream with those two cars for a very long time. And he's got slipstream now. He's behind the double zero of Pacey Wyden, who again is clicking off laps, trying to recover some spots from instance that we have. With, like Mo Perry, who just dropped due to uh, internet issues. And of course, we saw the incident with Carmen Siena on pit road. Does the 7 come in this time? We know 25 to the end? Yes. Well, this Final is what it comes the race. To, then. And perfectly on the marks once again. Could this be the undercut that decides the race here? Can he get out ahead of Josh Tucker again? He should come back out and lead lap without any issues here. Tucker, though, getting a little bit held up by Carmen Siena on pit lane exit. Had to lift out of it on the inside of turn two. Only just now gets around the 96, but he's going to have next to no momentum compared to Hamilton Akabuzi, who's on pit lane at the moment. This may be a lead change. Bryce Saucier is now your effective lead. Well, no, sorry. Bryce Saucier is your leader of the race with uh, Tucker and Hamilton Akabuzi in the strongest position right now. But Tucker then coming through turn one. Akabuzi right on that pit lane exit. Lilac Zier in your shot there, crosses that blue cone. 0.9 seconds is the gap. How much is it going to close down in these next few moments? Not much at all, but Tucker safely in the slipstream. Oh, Perry getting out of the way of Akabuzi, making him check up just a little bit. That's going to feed so much dead air to Tucker. He's going to drop back a little bit and leaves himself at a 0.8 second disadvantage as we come across the stripe. The lead, the current leaders now, the top 10, all have 22, now 23 laps on their fuel and their tires. They don't have to come down soon, but the window is wide open here. And the gap between your net leaders is nine tenths of a second as the number seven car lined up behind the 89 of Lilac Zir. Got caught up in that earlier incident in turn one. I don't think he's going to be thrilled to, to move aside for our leaders here. But this is going to let Josh Tucker 
at least hold on to the back of the seven for now and it's a good job because again the 44 needs a little bit extra fuel save maybe the seven is also taking the chance to to save a little bit here and just go absolutely flat out for the final 15 laps there's not like he's trying to set up a, a any particular move on the 89 here in turn three but Bryce Saucier has pitted from the lead of this race, and that cycles Alex Miller out to the front of the field with Parker Alexander for company. But just listening on, on board with Parker Alexander for a moment there, uh, his tyres are really struggling, especially in this dirty air, because his revs have been dropping so low mid-corner as Alex Miller heals in. And I'm wondering, will he get a lot, technically get a lot played? I think so, but it will be scored as just the one as Parker Alexander is now your race leader. Now for long, made the call to pit this time. And again, we're gonna see the rest of the field cycle through. And it will be this battle between the seven and the 44, once again, the story of the race. With Carmen Taylor, it looks like maybe she's trying to unlap herself after that pit road incident behind them, but focus on. These leaders who are about to make a hard charge on pit road uh, Emily Howe, uh, Alex Miller, Brandon Cruz, all making pit stops just there. And it looks like no major issues. Hamilton Akabuzi trying to do his best to not be uh, the fuel save, well, basically the car that's saving fuel for Josh Tucker. Both of them are going to let Carmen Sienna through. After Hamilton Akabuzi requests it, Carmen Sienna replying with a, not a good idea, I'm not straight. But so look let's see how now. this works out. Bryce Sosi has caught right onto the back of this train and is now officially in your lead battle. Yeah, Sosi and who is full push to the end of this race. Akabuzi and Tucker, who were both going to have to save, but have cars in front of them to save off. So how much uh, aggression is Sosi going to be willing to, to put on the table here as he hunts for that clean air, but not quite able to find it at the moment as the gap opens up between Tucker and Sosi. But here's a big bit of draft down this massive long back straight to try and take advantage of. Is he going to try and make a move work here? Looks to the outside. Plenty of clean air out there as all three of the cars that are at the front of the field take to that inside line trying to save that fuel off each other. Sorcier taking advantage of getting some clean air over the nose and then slotting straight back into the slipstream. As that said, John Hagen you can see in the background looking for position on Alex Miller. Bryce Saucier back to the outside once again, trying to build that momentum. Tucker checking up a little bit mid-corner, but Saucier not able to make anything happen for the moment. The 07 struggling to make that move work for now, but back into that slipstream once again. And this train is not running at 100% speed again. The top two maybe trying to get a bit of extra save off the 96 car. What this is going to do is it's going to let the cars behind start joining as well. We already saw Bryce catch up Parker Alexander is just a second and a half behind Emily Howe, another second further behind that. And then Alex Miller and John Hayden in tow. Here we go. This could be 0 7 to the inside of Tucker. They're going to be side by side through turn one. Tucker, though, with all of the momentum on the outside, does keep a hold of that position for now. Yeah, Bryce Sosi are pushing as hard as possible, and, and when it comes to the aggression right now, we're seeing from the 0-7, I'd have to wonder, is this going to end up shredding the tire instead of getting anywhere further? Because when you have Josh Tucker and Hamilton Akaboise are racing right against, these are the two best in the business when it comes to their expertise in the IRA team champ guard category. So it's going to take a lot to get by, even if you do have a tire advantage, and Josh Tucker's made it a hard fight so far, right down and under, neck and neck, ends up wiggling up top and nothing Bryce can do. Josh Tucker again comes out with the advantage and there's only so many times you can do that until you find yourself all out of luck and out of resources. So Bryce Sosier are going to have to be a little more calculated from here on out. If there's any opportunity to get up there, Bryce right now going to have to keep on fighting, but Josh Tucker gets away and Hamilton Akabwezi still holds the race lead and he must be delighted to see the racing behind him distracting both drivers. Yeah, Saucier doing everything he can to try and push Tucker and Hamilton Akabuzi along to make them burn their fuel. But all of this fighting and all of this fuel saving 
is bringing Parker Alexander, Emily Howe, and Alex Miller into the equation as Alex Miller makes a move on Emily Howe to take fifth place and is now the car 1.5 seconds back on this lead fight because knock knock, Parker Alexander is here and he wants to get involved. John Hayden down to pit road had an instant at turn one and has to take some repairs. That brings our lead lap cars down to 13 with Dale Markowski being the last one running. And oh my goodness, they are going at it again. Yeah, Saucier really, really unhappy with how Tucker raced him into turn one last lap and very much showing that this time in turns three and four. They are side by side across the stripe on the way down to turn one. Saucier takes the position from Josh Tucker, but Tucker's, uh, sorry, no, Tucker's come back at him. Side by side again through turn two. Bryce Saucier, they touch. Tucker's around. Contact between both cars. And they're wrecking and Miller's involved. And that is how you give away a race in two small turns. Cautions out. Miller, the bystander, gets destroyed. Josh Tucker and Bryce Saucier took away two good point stays. And I think both drivers might be done and done. Maybe Tucker got out of it. But Bryce Saucier is certainly destroyed. Definitely for Saucier, he's a look back. I'm just speechless once again. It was after the final, you see Josh trying to get into the wall, but then try and fight it again. And it's that little bit of contact out of turn two. Spinning around Josh Tucker and it collects by Saucier again. And they roll back down the track exactly where Alex Miller was trying to avoid. That'll be three cars out of the race, including, well, they were, they were really all contending for the win. That's about the worst outcome for those drivers you can imagine. We saw them ramping it up. The pressure here at the Brickyard has been much higher than any other race, and we're seeing some irrational decisions being made across the board. Admittedly, that might have been one of them, and both drivers stepping it up, and the displeasure turns to frustration in a higher context than ever before. Just much more damage than it would have been to let a driver go, but of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. And really, the big winner out of all of this is the number seven of House of Grace, who now definitely has the fuel to make it. And I'd imagine with about, what, 11 laps to go on this restart, is not in the trap position. Day is hard to the right. Pacey White will come down pit road. Uh, Tucker Sawyer is going to come down. And behind Josh Tucker, I think, is going to have to take some repairs to that car. But might have gotten the, the least damage of them and might be back into the lead lap to try and fight this one again. So, here's your story for the end of the race. Hamilton Akabuzi that we've seen at the front of the field every time he started a race in Season 5 of the ABN Champ Car World Series has got Parker Alexander for company, who has been so aggressive with his, with his moves throughout the entirety of this race so far, passing two cars into Turn 1 not once, but twice. That 45 car is going to give it absolutely everything to get in front of Hamilton Akabuzi and take that $50 bounty on that first place finish. Uh, I think at this point, it's safe to say tensions running high. We will have 11 laps once the car pulls the end of next lap. And just over 25 miles to try and shake out who wins this race. We've got just 12 cars on the lead lap here. As uh, Carmen Senna did make out ahead of the pace car. Uh, of course, was leading that train uh, with the 7, the 44, and the 07. And because of that, got one lap back after that uh, pit lane incident. So Carmen's hoping for one more caution to add to the... Uh, give the lucky dog and put her, her back on the lead lap for the, the final potentially up if if that goes to Tom maybe a maybe a two or three laps win to the finish out of all the drivers in the field right now who who do you want to be on board with at this point do you want to, do we want to be watching Parker Alexander try and make that move on Akabuzi do we want to be on board with Emily Howe watching it all happen in front of her or is Emily Howe going to be aggressive as well and try and make up those positions 
Brandon Cruz, Hunter Peach, and Lily Fraser are all going to be wanting to try and get involved in this one as well. So don't expect them to sit idly by and let the front three run away. But Emily Howe, with the championship practically decided, may make that decision to just hang back. But it could leave us susceptible to losing a podium place to Cruz, Peach, and Fraser behind. We have six cars on all tyres here. Uh, Hamilton on the oldest of them all. 13 laps in this stint compared to eight for Park and nine for Howe and Cruz. The cars behind the other six cars in the lead lap all came down pit road. Josh Drew came through some repairs, but they all have a fresh set of boots on now. And they're going to be trying to cut through the field. But it may seem just how well they can do that. There's a couple of lap cars like in the way of them as well. So the field split into two halves here. And it'll be the number seven leading the field back to the green flag for an 11 lap sprint to decide the ahead 500. Akabwezi, Parker Alexander, Emily Howe. By this point, the championship is almost effectively wrapped up. Of course, never say never at this rate, but Emily Howe is up there in the podium and maybe looking to keep it there. Hamilton, though, has got control, and Parker Alexander is looking to take it to extremes. Green flags out for 11 laps to go. Hamilton's going to bring us through into one. Gets a nice jump relative to the rest of the field, and we're underway once again. All your lead lappers getting away in succession. No troubles from front to back, and we are moving once more down the back straight 115 laps in. That draft snake already starting. Akabuzi moving aggressively to the inside on the exit of two to try and break that draft to Parker Alexander and stop him. Getting a move runners were nearly three wide in the back for position. And all three drivers making it out of that one alive, but I still on the front of the field as Parker Alexander trying to build that run on the race leader, Hamilton Akabuzi, Emily Howe, choose, and there's the wrecking. They're wrecking in the back. Massive contact as the caution comes out with 10 laps to go. Brennan Gray going to be in the, this one. Take a look back, and you're going to figure out what caused it here. The 65 coming out of turn four up top, and he's going to catch Ooh. a piece. So does Josh Tucker, and it That's looks like for incidents. Dale Mikowski, too. Two incidents at once. Just that turn four ball this time, catching out all the cars at once. Not expecting this sort of tight bunched up pack. Led by, it looks like Pacey Wygent was the lead car in it. Mo, uh, sorry, uh, Toto Sawyer and Carmen Sienna get away with it. Bobby Blowers, Dale Markowski, Josh Tucker, no, Josh Tucker collects Dale Markowski. Bernard Gregg goes in separately and is collected by Ruby Estes. And just a, a really an accordion of, of incidents there. There's Mo Perry having their own incident in front of that one as well. Slams into the wall on the exit of turn four. So we had three separate incidents happening in that one little thing that triggered the caution. That's, uh, I think that's a new AVN record, that one. And Mo Perry, just with, a, I think, the lightest touch and also with plenty of room ahead to uh, prevent any issues behind it's it's really those those latter two that caught it and um luckily everyone just about avoiding that attenuator because i thought for a second we had a couple cars climb right into it can't stop watching that uh with that blowers hit that is that is hard into the wall yeah i, th I think bobby's day is done what this will do is it will wave carmen sienna back onto the lead lap is going to be your 11th car and the last car in that group. We have to start from the tail end of the field, of course. But what this does, it gives these drivers at the front another little rest to uh, just catch their breath after that and, uh, and work out what their strategy is because we're going to be, well, this lap 117 now, if we want 18 at one to green. And then we'll have seven, up to seven laps to decide this race. I think the most important thing that our drivers need to remember going into this one now is to keep your heads. You don't win the race by being overly aggressive. It's got to be measured. 
and you've got to be sensible. That goes for everyone else in the field as well. Fight hard, but fight clean. Keep it green to the end of the race and keep this one fun for everyone. I think we've only had one race end under torsion so far this season. No, that two two end and no. Yeah, just one. It was one at Richmond. In my head, uh, Phoenix was, but no, that was a, a last lap incident that stayed green after the white flag fell. We do not want the prestigious event to be the second. One lap to green yet again. It will be a seven lap shootout. And the number seven is our driver leading. That is Hamilton Akabwezi. Parker Alexander was within arm's reach. But of course, that caution coming back so quickly does not help with the remainder of the field. Emily Howe is third. Brandon Cruz fourth. And how about Hunter Peach up into fifth? A driver we have mentioned briefly today. But now up inside the top five. Maybe an opportunity for a career high finish here. And maybe the fight for the podium is on for that number six crew. We've talked oh so much of the drivers who have made it this far. Carmen Sienna back on the lead lap. 11 drivers still up in front on the lead lap category. And we know how well a driver like Hamilton's done so far, but maybe someone who's been lurking in the shadows has a chance to pull through and give us a fight for the win as we're going to come back green this time by for what might be... Just a quick want to highlight, David, before we go back to green. Uh, excluding Hamilton Akabuzi, there are no drivers inside the top 10 that have moved up less than 10 positions. And hard... Two of them have moved up over 20. These drivers in the top ten, in the top, in the top six, sorry, are our biggest movers of the race so far. Time to figure out now whether or not the drivers have came this far of a chance to go for a few positions more. Hamilton going to lead the field back to green for seven more laps of racing. Green flags out again, and they're going to spread out. Coming to the start-finish line, Hamilton gets the run through one. Even start from the 7 and the 45 that time by Parker Alexander. Already looking to try and find a way past Hamilton Akabuzi. Emily Howe choosing to just hang back a little bit. There's a little bit of contact maybe with the outside wall from Akabuzi. No chance to swoop down to the inside this by Alexander has a run on Akabuzi to try and take the lead side by side through turn three. Plenty of momentum on the outside for Akabuzi to take advantage of that time. Holds on to the lead for now, but Alexander not going anywhere yet. That tighter line though. Holding him up a little bit on corner exit, having to tuck back into the slipstream as they are weaving all over the place in the background. The seven still managing to hold on through turn one here. Parker had to slot in and Emily Howe couldn't get the run as the third place car. The seven to try and put his hat to try drive as cleanly as possible. I think you don't want to play many draft games and if you can get those corner exits nice and clean, Maybe you don't have to worry about it, but we know that the 45 is reporting everything possible at this one. Has uh, has already had some good results this season. Had second place at Homestead behind Emily. And um, I think behind Emily. <laughs> but he's going to try and get it. We have five to go and the 45 still can't quite get that run. It'll still be the seven at the front of the field. And M has actually been uh, left behind a little bit. Now gap to seven tenths. And it's just these top two who are currently a lot step. The 45 trying to find a gap, but it's not opened up yet. Alexander looking for any line that he can to try and get some clean air on the nose of that IR-18. Nothing working for him yet so far, but just took in underneath to take a slightly tighter line on exit. Does seem to have worked. Hamilton Akabuzi, feeling like he's under threat, sweeps to the inside right down to the pit wall as Parker Alexander can't build that run yet again. A little bit of a downshift to try and get the car turned in for one, but kills all of the momentum through that corner as he drops back to three tenths. Akabuzi doing a fantastic job to maintain this position right now. The next flag will end the race, whether it's the, the yellow or the checker. We're coming to three laps to go here and Parker Alexander doesn't seem to have an answer just yet. But we've still got 13 more tournaments, now 12. And we've seen 
a race like this before, you have to be perfect through the final corner all the way to the checkered flag to hold on. That's what's being asked for the seven. Can he do it? The gap is going to be a quarter of a second as they race down the back straightaway, trying to break that toe up and down the circuit. Parker Alexander has kept Hamilton honest to this point, but it's five and a half more miles from here that make up the difference between victory and defeat. Parker going to be coming across the corner this time by, same with Hamilton Akabwezi, and they'll make it popsicle sticks for the final time in Indianapolis. We have five miles to go. Working down and under, getting that toe, but nothing to do with it. He'll have to lay off into one and back it up one more time to set up for the back straightaway of this lap. We've seen a lap flat pass here to side the race. We've seen a lap flat the last lap crash here to side the race. Park Ride Dial hope to keep one and not the other. They're going to come through turns three and four for the final time. The gap three tenths of a second. Going to try and slot into the slipstream, get the best run out of four possible. And as the white oh. flag is held in the air, Park Ride Dial has a bit of a run. And Hamilton's having to block. They're going to get to the bridge. White flag, and Hamilton will hold the lead into turn one here. Not going to be enough for Parker Alexander once again, not able to build the momentum that he needs to make that move on the seven, on the seven of Hamilton Akabuzi. No clean air through turn two for Parker Alexander to use. Akabuzi swings it down to the inside yet again to maintain the position. Breaking the draft, giving Parker Alexander nothing. But we are two corners to go in the Arrowhead 500. Hamilton Akabuzi still leads into and through the final corner. Parker Alexander, though, the closest he's been so far. He's going to be in the draft all the way down the start finish line. But Hamilton Akabuzi will hold on to win the Arrowhead 500. Parker Alexander going to finish just short in second place here. And Emily Howe will hold on to P3. And with that result, will take home your... Uh, Champ Car Season 5 title. Top two have immediately parked it. And Emily Howe's got reason to celebrate unlike no other. Champ Car's champion is crowned a podium sitter in the Arrowhead 500. Emily Howe collects the title. Hamilton Akabwezi with the win. And Parker Alexander, a valiant effort. To come through in second, 101 thousandths behind at the stripe. And I think Howe's going to have the opportunity and the honor of getting that burnout here at the Yard of Bricks. And we'll see whether or not Emily chooses to go for it. It looks like instead a drop down a pit road. One final chance. Oh, we got destruction. That's going to be uh, quite the hit. And just like that, Emily Howe goes through with no trouble and will make it in as a champion at the end of night. I feel like this is one of those rare opportunities where we need to do the uh, do the interviews in reverse order because we definitely can't end with our series champion. Uh, it can't start with our series champion even. We uh we don't have the number seven on the line currently. We actually only have our second place finisher currently. So um, if we can get a hold of uh, of Hamilton, we'll try and have a word with him. Otherwise, it might be. Starting with the the series title and ending with the race title um, here at Indianapolis. I'm just trying to unpack that one in my head at the moment. That was, uh, wow, what an end to that race. So close over the line. The gap, just one tenth of a second. If that straight was, uh, if the run to the line was a few meters longer, it could have been a completely different story. Just Parker Alexander not able to build the run that he needed to try and take that that win away from Hamilton Akabuzi. But what a bit of driving from Akabuzi to hold on to that position in the way that he did. Just throwing all that dirty air at Alexander in exactly the right places to kill any chance of building any momentum off the corners for Parker. 
How much time do we have word from our race winner, an Arrowhead 500 champion, uh, has to run off very quickly, finish off some homework for tomorrow. <laughs> it's uh, not always a glamorous life, but a fantastic race uh, from the Team i5G driver taking another spectacular race win here at the Brick Yard. It has a very long list that that, that race gets to enter itself onto. As it stands, it looks like it's time to get a word from your champion, bottom step of the podium. Let's bring in your number 83, Emily Howe, standing by. This one's all you, David. This is the champion interview. Well, you're right about that. Third place finisher in tonight. I think that's the highest accolade. Something to keep in mind. Title is yours, Emily. And a third place finish goes right with it. The Arrowhead 500, maybe not up there fighting for lead all throughout, but a big celebration collecting the title. Your season five champion. How you feeling, Emily Howe? You got it done all throughout the season. Yeah, that was a that was a tough race, you know, it's sort of kind of in a weird situation where we're kind of all off strategy and lots of yellows and got damaged early, so it was really trying to struggle to kind of keep the car under control there and on the end had the winning strategy but just had nothing for, for Parker and, and Hamilton up there, so great job to those two. Um and uh great job to everyone all season. Uh, glad to be champion. And this season came down to an awful lot of consistency in almost every round. We saw you up in front contending for victory from the very beginning in Chicago and on. It was no doubt a team meant to fight for the checkered flag from the very beginning. And what was it like bringing Champ Car back here to ABN, knowing your successes in terms of the Winsdale scene and such, and now taking it to the open wheel side of things and starting to get yourself accustomed to it? It seems like very easy to acclimate for the entire 83 crew. Yeah, definitely a new adventure. Um, I have never driven these cars really much in the past four or five years, so kind of fish out of water to some degree, but at the same time, you know, ovals are my forte, so I was able to really capitalize on them all season and kind of stay out of trouble for the most part and just kind of, you know, finish top five when I, you know, was performing and really uh, persevered through a lot of stuff, so it'll be fun next season, kind of have my footing on me and, you know, be able to just hit the ground running. Getting it all started well brings us to this point where the championship came down to what we thought was going to be a three-horse race. Unfortunately, Austin Fart not able to join us tonight, and it came down to you and Lilac Zier. Now, Lilac got involved with some trouble earlier on. It all came down to just holding on, staying on the track, and for 125 laps filled with quite a few cautions in between, I'm sure it wasn't the easiest of nights for this entire, of course, field. And for you personally, what was it like avoiding all the trouble that we saw? Well, I really didn't necessarily avoid much of it. Uh, it's kind of all around me. And then lap 45, and then I think about lap 70 again, I hit the wall twice just because of stuff happening below me and kind of really hampered the car from there. I was down about two tenths a second a lap on the straightaways and just really draggy and lack of downforce. So really had to play myself into a backward strategy to kind of keep myself you know, in the fight because I couldn't do it on track. I had to really do it in the pits. And so... We kind of decided as a group to pit with, uh, I think it was about 48 to go and just really ride it out until we got to that final point about 21 to go where we can just push full beans. And that would end up being the winning strategy and, you know, just kind of help track with us from there. But really struggled with the car there the second half of that race. And coming through when it matters the most with this season, now the rearview mirror, third place here. At the Yard of Bricks, of course, a tremendous finish for this operation from 16th up to 3rd. 13 places gained, and one of our biggest movers all the night. You've already proven at this point you got the opportunity to, and the ability to fight for a championship in this open wheel scene. And we're going to have a little bit of a summer break and bring it back for Season 6. Maybe a chance to go for the back-to-back -back performance? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, really just need to be more consistent on road courses. I think, you know, the oval game... We got down packed, just need to, you know, be more consistent, you know, showing up each week and, you know, 
run the road courses. I don't think I ran a finished a single road course race this year. <laughs> well, be a chance for tides to turn. We come back after our break. Even if you didn't make it to those road course events, dominant when you were able on the ovals. And tonight, podium finish to cap off what has been a success from start to finish. Emily Howe, bottom step of the podium in our Arrowhead 500 and the champion of the Champ Car World Series. Do you have any final comments or shout outs you'd like to make after this performance? Yeah, just want to thank everyone at ABM for putting this all together, all the fans back at the shop and everybody who came out and raced all season long. Um, it's been a fun time, and I'll see you again for season six. And it would be great to have you back. Emily Howe, our champion here in the ABN Champ Car World Series. We thank you for your time and your participation all season long. We hope to see you back come season six. With Emily Howe on the move, unfortunately, we've still not gotten word about where Hamilton Acabuese is uh, maybe not going to get our race winner in for tonight. Uh, we're we, looking we, through all of them. You know where he is. He's, he's, he's gone to do his homework, David. Ah, so we'll be able to get everyone in. Well, should we just keep on going and get Parker Alexander? We absolutely can. There we have it. Second place, Parker Alexander from 28th to 2nd. I think he's the biggest mover tonight. By far, we're bringing in the number 45. Uh, this is Olivia from the ABM booth. Do you want to copy? Yes, I do. Well, what a what a hard charge that was. Uh, after I believe having to qualify your way in through the LCQ, moving all the way through the field, staying out of trouble as much as you could, and then having yourself in a bit of a, a duel with Howard Nakabrace. Just talk us through that race. How how was it attacking that one from the very back? What was your strategy to try and make your way through the field? And do you think you had anything for Hamilton if there was maybe a couple more laps to run? Well, I'd like to give a huge shout out to myself for uh, wrecking on uh, the outlap of uh, qualifying last week. That really, really put myself in a bind here tonight. But uh, yeah, making my way through that field was tough all night. Um, obviously pretty hard to pass around here with the arrow push and stuff like that. But uh, that's why I like racing things like that, because you really got to think about where you place your car and... Uh, where the, the people you're racing around and stuff like that, and uh, really makes you think. And yeah, Hamilton, he's he's quick as quick as hell, man. I I, I don't know if I could have had anything for him there. With a couple more laps, I think I might have needed about five, because I just I was really struggling to get a real good run on him. He's just quick. It was a uh, a great mindset we saw in the Discord. Um, seat maybe starting to to open up, and um, your spec on this was. Uh, I, I I trust myself. I I trust the myself to put it into the field here and uh and make the moves happen from there. But how worried were you going into that LC2 session of uh whether you could out qualify uh, the remaining cars and bump your way into the field to even have a chance at this comeback? I was I wasn't only really worried about that. I was worried about wrecking myself again. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, so a lot of a lot of mental hurdles going into tonight, but uh, thankfully we got through them. And uh, yeah, those guys, those guys in the LCQ quality really gave me a good run. It was it was pretty close, and uh, yeah, I was really happy to make it. Uh, and like, man, that run through the field was intense. You know, got got it, had to pass a lot of cars, had to avoid had to avoid a lot of wrecks. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, Olivia. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to finally finish another race. I haven't finished. <laughs> I haven't finished one of these since my first uh, first race in Homestead, so I'm uh, I'm happy to get over that hurdle. Hopefully next season we can clean it up a little bit and uh, hopefully contend for a title. Yeah, two two races. Uh, you mentioned there this one and Homestead, both P2 finishes in very tight battles through the final laps. Going into season six and um, with the calendar now having been confirmed, starting off of course at Michigan on July 10th. Um, do you think you contend for a, a race win or two? And like, and like you said, try and carry the momentum forward early to start heading towards the championship fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a. I don't know how Michigan drives in these cars. The only thing I worry about is you know that maybe that wide enough and big enough track. Maybe that might be a little bit of a pack race. I don't really like those in these cars, but you know, hopefully, hopefully that's not the case. But uh, yeah, if I just hopefully I'll be able to avoid some calamity in those and. Uh, just uh, do my best to avoid the chaos because these cars bring it, no matter what you, no matter what you're running. 
Well, thank you for joining us, and, and congratulations on that podium finish. A, a great springboard to go forward into uh, season number six. But before you go, of course, the floor is yours. Anyone you want to shout out, take it away. Congratulations on a P2 finish here in the Outhead 500. I'd like to thank my teammate, Brandon Cruz, and uh, my corporate teammate, uh, Emily Howe. Uh, they were great, great partners tonight. And uh, I'd like to thank all the guys back at the, the WMU shop. Sean, Dylan, Brennan, all those boys, and uh, yeah, y'all have a y'all have a great night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, enjoy tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back for season six. Alrighty, thank you very much. Well, with Parker Alexander on the way, there's only one more driver of interest. After all, we've seen tonight, and looking to find out whether or not our number seven is currently in queue with us. Don't that's the case. Hamilton Acabuese, of course, the talk of the town, winning here in the Arrowhead 500. And currently, I don't believe he's with us, so maybe a little bit of time to run through our results. Yeah, I think that'll probably round out our, um, our, our interview section. So, first of all, let's go to our race results here, of course. For the Arrowhead 500, it will be the number seven taking the top step after starting eighth and, and running a very consistent race, Parker Alexander and Emily Howe rounded out your podium with the 83, taking home the season five champ car title. And to compete with a fantastic run also from the LCQ to fourth position with Josh Tucker recovering from that late incident to bring home a top five. Brandon Cruz in the finish P6 here tonight. Uh, Tucker Sawyer, P7, with Carmen Sierra getting back to P8 after a pit stop error. Blake Henderson taking over Christina Ryan's car and finishing P9 on the day. And it'll be Ruby Estes, your 10th and final car on the lead lap for tonight's running. Mo Perry starts, finish, uh, starts 11th, finishes 11th, uh, getting involved in incidents earlier on in the race that hampered what could have been their performance today. Pacey Wygen up 10 places from 22nd to finish P12 as the page cycles. I have to kill time for half a moment. Uh, Lily Fraser and Lilac Zier finishing 13th and 14th respectively. Not the sort of race Zier would have wanted. Not able to take home the team's... Uh, actually, we didn't check the team's championship, but uh, I believe... Loading up right now as you read through the rest of these. Uh, finishing 14th. Uh, Dale Markovsky making his first start in the season, finishes P15. Brennan Gregg drops one place to finish 16th. And Bryce Saucier, who got involved in that late race incident, only manages 17th place finish. Alex Miller, who was one of the cars caught in that three-car wreck, finishes P18 from third. John Hagen finishes 19th after a strong one in the top five uh, late on in the race. Frankie Wynn, 21st. Eli Sasek. I got my... I'm, uh, where's 20 seconds? A bit of a scramble here. Pressy. Hang what on a the? second. Hang on, what's going on here? Um, ha, let me let me let me pick this back up on a uh, on ATVO. Uh, John Hagen finishes 19th, followed by Bobby Flowers, who finishes in 20th place. Nicholas Pressy 21 at uh, 21st in the field, and Eli Sasik, who again got involved in a bit of an incident, finishes 22nd. Uh. Then it's Frankie Wynn in 23rd, uh, Bruce Silver 24th, and Tommy Reynolds, who was leading a good chunk of this race in 25th. Kevin Feimster and Kevin, uh, Ryan Parnell finish 26th and 27th, and Pelletier Sharp finishes 28th after getting involved in that incident under caution, taking out two of the Gearcats cars, but then got running again later, but not able to make anything happen out of that one. Selena Thompson finishes 29th, and rounding out the top 30 is Kevin Young. Um, with a disappointing finish for where he was running. Your pole sitter of Seth Wansing finishes 31st in the race. Uh, Zach McBride, 32nd. Emma Kruger is 33rd. And the last of the finishers in this race, Tommy Withers, who turned up unexpected and got disqualified before the race even started. Yeah, Tommy Withers was our, was our uh, next alternate in line if we couldn't get everyone into the server in time. But of course... Uh, we had our 33 car field nice and organized, and um, we have to wait for, I think, a couple more minutes um, to get the full championship standards, but there's one thing we do know for sure. We don't need our calculators for this one. Emily Howe is going to be your Season 5 champion for Arrowhead Racing. I believe, uh, in fact, 
How would Slash replace it? Could maybe jump as high as second uh, with a fantastic sort of late season charge there. Four wins from seven starts. Uh, but it'd be Austin Farr and Lyle at Zier up there in that fight as well. Um, and still yet to be determined, still calculating whether it be Deer Cats or Arrowhead Racing taking home that title. But with two very strong top 10 results for Arrowhead Racing, and that might be enough to overhaul Deer Cats, who had just the worst luck today, I think you've got to say. None of their cars making it back without significant damage. Lila Zir doing her best to get every point possible, finishing P14 in the end. Really a fantastic effort, but might not be enough for either of the championships so far uh, tonight. And as we're waiting, our final official championship standings, it's bizarre almost to say that we've gotten to the end of Season 5. Now, for the viewers who have been here all throughout the season, we previously teased what's coming up next with Season 6. And of course, our eyes are still on what we could see for the remainder of 2024. And I'm sure with us for a while here you're definitely interested in our plans so with that being said let's get a little bit more information as we are waiting for the final points to come around season six that is what we've got next on the table and there's a lot of tracks that we went to this season that won't be coming back instead we're seeing a different schedule now as it stands season six was and have his fair share of road courses always we're getting the official schedule up right now and just trying to look for all the specifics to ensure we can give you all the information a little bit of time to kill let's get into a little more about what we expect to see from here on out the champ car world series is due to return and it's going to come back with the michigan 400 on july 10th then we're going to be going to newton iowa we'll be going to miami but this time in the roval configuration and a few new tracks include the usa international speedway we'll be going to the twin rig motegi's road course config and the oval for a double header of sorts two weeks at the same venue in two different configurations. Kentucky Speedway is our season finale November 13th. We're going to Wisconsin for Road America, not to mention the Nashville Super Speedway, Chicago Street Course, and Mission Barber Motorsports Park. We've got ourselves some of the best tracks in all the country and international to bring to you on ABN, and I'm sure that if you've been with us this season and that you have enjoyed it, there's a lot to come. So, Final points, still looking to get that organized. Is there any word about what we're looking at? Uh, not quite yet. I don't think we will keep an eye on that. But one thing we should also, when you mentioned too, Champ Car Season 6 is about to start late July. But alongside that, we should be having the Champ Car Light Series in partnership with HTL. Um running that in the IRO5 machines to uh, give people sort of a, an opportunity to, to work their way into this series and, and gain some experience in a, a little bit of a different environment. So uh, there's details for that over on the ABN Twitter to go and uh, have a quick look at. But I believe we are just about ready to review the final points standings just uh, is there a time to, to, to double up the points for five points? How's that a boy say? We'll jump up to P2 from just seven race starts with Austin Farr bringing home P3, just one point ahead of Lilac Zier, who couldn't really get started tonight. Kept getting caught up in instance. Alexander Miller will be your fifth and final I mean, your fifth place uh, driver in the standings. Trade Forsyth, Lily Pelletier Sharp, Nicholas Pressy, Carmen Siena, and Bobby Blowers are uh, going to be your top ten in the championship. Over at the team side of things, Arrowhead Racing you do overhaul the gap with 652 total points to take the championship win. A 24-point margin over Deer Cats, uh, who were well ahead of the field behind Stephenson Motorsports, just pipping Nicholas Pressy, E-Motorsports, 
with Dodbot Racing in P5. Arrowhead Racing also, just by two points, managing to outperform the the free agent conglomerate that uh, <laughs> is on the team standings table. So even if you if everyone else had to join together and, and form a, a super team, it would just about still be our heads this season. And breathe. So I guess uh, that brings us to the end of Camp Car Season 5, and I think it's a, it's a little bit emotional. Um, there's been a lot of learning on and off track for everyone. It's the first time us as a broadcast crew have been together, and Hasn't it been been fantastic to watch these drive watch these drivers grow, along uh, uh, essentially alongside us this full season? Uh, a, a lot of these guys really struggling to get to grips with the car early on, but seen some fantastic strong finishes from them towards the end of the season. Uh, highlights for me personally: Mo Perry and uh, Alex Miller, who have really pulled it out in these last few races. Uh, Alex Miller, who managed to pull off uh, a well, I think the the stat was three fourth place finishes in the last half of the season and a podium, and Mo Perry always there or thereabouts in that top ten, despite both of them really really struggling at the start of the season. And um, but the the story has really been Hamilton Akabuzi versus everyone else every time he's turned up, and Austin Farr to a certain extent as well. Uh, it's sad that he couldn't be with us here today to fight it out for the championship against. Emily Howe, but to still have Akabuzi putting on a show all throughout the field, starting uh, out of position and getting swallowed up a little bit by the pack was was brilliant to see and watch his race develop throughout the last uh, couple of hours or so. Uh, it was dramatic, there were thrills, there were spills, and every time it was green, they kept us on the edge of our seat, and it was just brilliant to watch alongside uh what what have become two of my favourite people in the world. <laughs> I'm so glad that sentiment shared, guys. Thank you for bringing <laughs> it back. Oh, I was just silence speaking to... your volumes. I was expecting David to come in, I'm sorry. I was wondering who was going to come in first. Honestly, <laughs> it's surprising no, we've gone both, for so both, long. Both, oh, that, see, that, that's how nice we are. We're just both holding the door open and going, no, after you, after you. Exactly. That's, ex that's exactly what we just saw there. <laughs> it's late. This is I know, our longest race of the season. And uh, I think the petite said on all of us at this point. But yeah, I mean, we saw some fantastic races. Just, I mean, even... even Think about the uh, the finish we had two weeks ago at Phoenix. The the duel that we had at um at New Hampshire. That I mean, even going back to the very start of the season, we had a side by side, nearly three wide finish on the first race of the season. It was a hell of a tone to set this run off and the return to the screens for the Champ Car World Series. It's been wonderful to be able to to share this with the world again uh, because. There was a long time where that was very uncertain, and, and now the community across iRacing is really as, as strong as ever. And um, let's not forget, as we go into um, our sort of off-season break here, a lot of these drivers will be sticking around and setting up camp at the Brickyard. We've got next week, the, the, the full-length official series comes here for their 500km race, and the week after, the special event that runs a full 500 miles. So. The action's not done at the Brickyard just yet. I'm sure you'll see a fair few of these faces throughout iRace in the next couple of weeks. So uh, if you do spot anyone, give, give them a cheer because um, I, it's just wonderful to see uh, all the drivers uh, succeeding, really. And it looks like now we find ourselves at the very tail end of Season 5. And for the viewers, I'm certain this was a welcome surprise for the entire ABN community. Great to have this entire crew back, of course, for each and every week of our 13 races of coverage here, concluded with the Arrowhead 500. And if you're with us from all, thick and thick... correction there, David. Um, I think you'll find I was the only one that was here for every single race. That is season. true. That Thank is you true. Very much. Bryce, you did I'm make... I'm sorry I had to go dodge it. That I'm was, that was proud of that one. I'm proud of that one. 
all for you. We missed we missed one each. Olivia and I did miss one each. But regardless, the viewers have been with us all throughout. And I think that's one of the biggest deals that we've made this series return. It's a welcome surprise for everyone. And I'll tell you this much, cannot wait to be back. Such fantastic racing with some of the most talented drivers in all of open wheel racing community and i think that we're only going to see even better racing in the months to come when we return from michigan and the usa 500 will be a thriller unlike any other if you thought you've seen the best of it already you definitely haven't and here on aba and esports we're going to keep you updated all throughout so leave a follow if you haven't already stay tuned on our social media pages we right back up on your screen right now so you know exactly where to go for all of our information the champ car world series is just getting started once again season five exciting but season six is going to give you that much more and your continued support means everything to this abn community so if you want to check us out of course these links are free to go to whenever you want for whichever platform you use thank you for your sincere support all throughout the season and for the three of us in the commentary booth all throughout, it has been a pleasure providing all of the action from start to finish. I've been David Kreutz, joined throughout the season by Olivia Hayward and Taylor Mills, and we are more than welcome to welcome you back to ABN all throughout the week. So check out the additional content we have, a lot of racing action and all disciplines of racing indeed. Expect to see a little bit more open wheel content, I'll say that much, and Keep your eyes peeled for what's next with Champ Car, because that's going to be even more exciting as the months pass by. Thank you all for stopping by for coverage of the Arrowhead 500. We'll welcome you back July 10th for the Michigan International Speedway, and we hope to see you there. Thank you all for your support, and we hope you have a fantastic night. This has been exclusive coverage of the 2024 Arrowhead 500.